presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports, a division of Jefferson Pilot Financial. Welcome to Jordan-Hare Stadium on the campus of Auburn University. The Auburn Tigers and the Ole Miss Rebels just getting underway. You've just seen the second play from the line of scrimmage for the Auburn Tigers as Ole Miss won the toss, deferred to the second half. Auburn receiving the football. And here we go in a big early <laughs> season game in the Southeastern Conference in the Western Division. The defending Western Division champion Auburn Tigers against the Ole Miss Rebels. Boy, and you think these fans don't know how loud it is, Dave Steele? Man! And this place is jumping early. Oh, David boy. Steele, Dave Rowe, and Warren Pepper on the sideline. What a game at uh, Vanderbilt earlier today. Alabama surviving a major Commodore scare. And now game number two of our SEC doubleheader. Jason Campbell, the redshirt freshman, has DeAndre Green. And Auburn picks up the first down at their 37-yard line. Well, a lot of time to stand back there for Jason Campbell. Look down, come off your primary receiver, find somebody on that little curl area inside, and he picks up first down. That's what he does so well. Ole Miss has got to get pressure. Jason Campbell, the redshirt freshman from Taylorsville, Mississippi. Ronnie Brown across the 45, near another Auburn first down, a great blocking on the left side of the line. There's the leader, Jason Campbell. Boy, he's a good one. I like talking with him yesterday. Big guy, long, big long fingers. Really calm, cool talking to us. And look at those stats from last week. Shows a lot of composure. He's 6'5", almost 220 pounds. And you see what he did last week in Auburn's debut against Ball State. This is Brown again. And he picks up the Auburn first down at about the 48-yard line. Marcus Woodson. In on the tackle for Ole Miss. Let's take a look at our Chevy starting lineups. For the Auburn Tigers, Ronnie Brown, a big game last week. He averaged 13 yards per carry, the redshirt freshman from Cartersville, Georgia. And up front for the Auburn uh, Tigers along the offensive line. This crew, a combined 85 starts. Kendall Simmons, a preseason All-American at left tackle. Carter, the speedster in motion. They swing it to Carter in the left flat. Streaking down the sideline, Carter bounced out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. For a great block downfield by Lorenzo Diamond, number 49. A Chevy Ole Miss defense for you. Anthony Sims anchors a defensive line for the Ole Miss Rebels, a bit undersized against Auburn's big front line. Eddie Strong returning after missing all of last year with a stress fracture in his ankle. And Seneca Taylor, all Southeastern Conference, at a cornerback position. Boy, an interesting play selection by Ole Miss. They've decided they're going to run the football until they get stopped. Now, that yellow flag that was just thrown back there. And look at the yellow flag. It's on number 75 right on his, on his chin. <laughs> stuck to him. <laughs> stuck to him. He said, what's that? <laughs> the official hit him with the flag. Literally. That may be against him. Hart McGarry on the back side might have gotten caught for holding. I think when an official throws a flag and it hits you, you're probably the guy that was guilty. You see the hold right there? That may be the hold there. The flag was kind of thrown behind. That block looked like a, a little bit better block. That was Crittenden, number 65, with it. But I think it was on the back side, especially when the official threw and hit him right in the chest with it. Britain did a big fella. Oh, boy. 150 pounds. Tommy Tuberville, the head coach of the Auburn Tigers in his third year. Four years, the head coach of the Ole Miss Rebels. That controversy has quieted down a good deal, Dave. Yeah, and he didn't have any feelings, uh, any strong feelings. He said, I kind of think it's it's David Cutcliffe's team now. Robert Johnson on the receiving end at the 40-yard line. They get back to the original line of scrimmage. Now, when you have two tight ends like oh, uh, like Auburn has in Diamond and Johnson, you can utilize them in not only just the, the running plays, but you can use them off the line of scrimmage. And you see Robert Johnson get down here, number 87, he just gets a curl in the seam, and you got to run back. He's another one of those big guys, 6'6", six, six, about 275, and he can run. And they love their tight ends at Auburn. Lorenzo Diamond, Robert Johnson... 
A freshman, Jay Ratliff, played some last week. We'll probably see him today as well. Again from the shotgun, Campbell. Connecting with Watkins at the 31-yard line, about a yard short of a first down for the Tigers. And Dave, I can see right now that Don Lindsay's defense for Ole Miss is going to have to make a decision. Are they going to blitz or are they going to allow him to sit back there and pick him apart? This is like seven on seven. Look at this. No pressure in his face. Nobody there. Waits for his wide receivers to make a second move. And you, if you're going to stand back there and give him this much time, this is when you complete a lot of passes. Now see if Don Lindsay doesn't try, with his defensive scheme, try to just kind of bring more live people up on the line of scrimmage and get some pressure on him. We've got seven in the box on third down and one. Ronnie Brown uh, battling his way toward the 30. And I don't know if he made it. It appears that he's short. Yeah, he had to make the 30-yard line. He may be just a touch short. Oh, man, fourth down, Tommy Tuberville. There's no, there's no question here he's going to go for it. Well, Anthony Sims stepped in and just stuffed that play at the line of scrimmage for Ole Miss. Boy, you know what I'd like to see here? That little play fake action in the line, pull it back out. Have some courage and throw it. But uh, when you've got a running team and an offensive line like Auburn does, you go for the run, get the first. And they run the cross sweep. And pick up the first down with Brown across the 30 to about the 29-yard line. Yeah, Marcus gonna, Woodson made the tackle. I'm an old defensive player, so I like to see gambles. But this is a safe play. Give it a toss. Get a couple of those big guards out in front of you. And then just pick up those blocks. Good block up front there. You see the, the lead block by Brandon Johnson, number 45. Just clear the way. Keep the ground. Just keep it grinding out. There's the play selection. Good. Good mix. Six rush, four pass. None of the passes have been hurried. Ooh, love the play of the drive. A hand off to Brown. Ole Miss in there trying to rake the ball out of his arms, but the, the freshman holds on to the 25-yard line. I know for Auburn and their staff, this is one of the concerns that they had, is they didn't know exactly what Don Lindsay, the defensive coordinator, scheme would be. They said he puts a lot of people up in the box. He'll fool you a lot, drop and play man coverage from running from up on the line of scrimmage. This is a great drive. It started back inside the 20-yard line. And Auburn chewing up that clock in the first quarter. Second down and six. Brown sweeping left. Oh, he got drilled right at the 20-yard line by Lanier Gophy. When I know we've talked a lot about tight ends, and we don't want to make them the, the sole purpose of this game. But number 49, Lorenzo Diamond, gets a great block there, turning them on on the outside. If you're going to get a block, you've got to get that tight end outside. You see him just driving off the line right there on the left of your screen? Boy, that's a, that was a good hit, too. Ole Miss has just got to come with pressure. They've got to gamble a little bit. Let Gothi come up through the middle. We've got some youngsters up in the middle there. They just need to get pressure on them. Big third down play at the Ole Miss 20. Boy, this is where Campbell can kill you. If he drops back to pass, watch out, he can run. The toss it instead to Brown, trying to sweep. Ole Miss has it closed down. Brown fighting his way near the 18. Gothi hit him along with Seneca Taylor. It'll be close to another first down. Boy, you know what Auburn did that time? They did a smart thing. When he got stood up there, they pushed the pile forward over the 20-yard line. I think he had to make about the 18-and-a-half-yard line, so he may be just a little bit short. But again... If I'm Tubby Tuberville and I'm his staff, I say, hey, we came here to establish the run. And standing on the Ole Miss sideline, uh, eagerly awaiting his first SEC opportunity, Eli Manning. But his defense has got to do a job right here on fourth down and a yard for Auburn. Here come the big boys. Campbell stuffs it right up the middle. And uh, it all depends upon the spot. Well, he's got two good ones up there. Well, actually, he's got three great ones in that center in Pasillo and, and Nowland and uh, McGarry. They're big guys. And, I mean, this is just plow them off the ball. You just get hard. You see the old Miss players coming over top of the top trying to get it. But uh, good surge right there. Look, number 75. That's McGarry. Great drive blocker. 6'5", 290. He's got a lot of weight on his hands, and he just rotor roots them out of there. I don't even think if, if it's fourth down, I think they still go for it. Ooh, it's going to be close. Oh, oh wait a minute. I shouldn't say that. That was fourth down. Fourth Excuse down. me. Oops. <laughs> so uh, the Tigers gamble 
Boy, on fourth and short twice on this drive. Boy, and that made it. That didn't make it by very much. That's a lot closer than I thought. Campbell using that big experienced offensive line to pick up the first down, and now he'll call timeout. So the Auburn Tigers driving the football from inside their 20-yard line to start this ball game. We played better than half of the first quarter. And Auburn has had the football. They'll be running their 14th play when we come back in just a moment. No score from Auburn, Alabama. SEC football is being brought to you by Alltel. Alltel Total Freedom Plans give you nationwide calling with no roaming or long-distance charges. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. By Ice House, you've got style all your own. Ice House style, enjoy. By your local Toyota dealers, Toyota, get the feeling. And by the thousands of drink combinations at Sun, America's drive-in. Welcome back to Jordan Hare Stadium. Beautiful, uh, although warm, Saturday afternoon. And earlier today, the first game of our doubleheader up in Nashville, Alabama surviving the Vanderbilt Commodores in a, a battle of field goal kicking, and Vandy had a chance to tie yeah. it up late, didn't they? Dave? Well, they did. They had a short field goal they missed. That was the story of the game, or we may still be at uh, Vanderbilt. <laughs> but we're not. We're right here in Auburn, Alabama. What do those guys complain about being hot? This is a beautiful day. <laughs> uh, we'll talk to Warren Pepper about that here shortly. See how how warm he thinks it is down on the sideline. Uh, it is a steamer down on the field, and uh, a crowd of better than 86,000 on hand to watch the Auburn Tigers SEC debut. They shut out Ball State last week, 30 to nothing, and Ole Miss beat Murray State, 49 to 14. David Steele, Dave Rowe, Warren Pepper on the sideline. Now, let me tell you how big this series is right now. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, you've gotten the ball driven on you. If you can make a stop here, hold them to a field goal try, that is a big one. Big series here for Ole Miss. Campbell. Looking for Green. And I think Taylor might have picked it off. I think, you know, I think he came down. I saw a foot down in the end zone. Did he not come down and bound? I sure thought I saw a foot down. Yeah, Taylor got it. All right. That was a heck of a play. Boy, now that's really interesting. That's what a defense can do. If you can stop them, I was talking about a field goal try, but if you can come up with a big defense to stop, then all you got is a lot of yards. Great play inside right here. You take away the inside, you look back for the ball, and you see that foot come right down. It came down in the end zone. Again, look at this. Just excellent play. They throw against one of the best cover guys that Ole Miss has in Seneca Taylor. Taylor moved from safety to the cornerback spot, and there you saw perhaps why. Great coverage on DeAndre Green, an outstanding receiver for Auburn. And the ball was slightly underthrown. Here's Eli Manning. Gunn gets the call on first down across the 25 to the 28 yard line about seven yards on the carry well here's uh, the guy everybody's talking about nationwide Eli Manning and uh, of course his family legacy just uh, incredible his father the All-American Archie Manning his brother the great Peyton Manning now with the Indianapolis Colts and Eli off to an unbelievable start last week in his first start uh, at Ole Miss I can promise you that Archie didn't have stats like that five touchdown passes in the game he might have run for five in the game but I don't remember him passing for five Auburn's big physical front line led by uh, Dontarius Thomas stacking up gun near the line of scrimmage let's take a look at our Chevy starting lineups for the Ole Miss Rebels gun he's the man the senior the 23 year old no Deuce McAllister gun uh, one of the top rushers in the SEC two years ago and he is expecting to have a big year this season. Terrence Metcalf, All-American preseason at left tackle. A couple of youngsters, Buckles and Johnson, a pair of freshmen. And you got the Johnson brothers on the right side of that line. I think you throw in this situation. You want to keep a drive alive. Manning tosses it to the tight end, Ziggler. And he will 
will be uh, across the 30 for a first down. And Ziegler, Ziegler's an interesting story because he rooms with Eli Manning and he had not gotten a pass before that one. Didn't get a pass from last week. And 11 different receivers caught a pass yeah. last week. Aubrey defensively. James Collier. Well, this guy, his engine never stops. They moved him to defensive end and he played great last week at that position. Mark Brown, very solid at middle linebacker. Thomas, tremendous speed. And in the secondary, led by Roderick Hood, the junior. It's a young secondary for the Auburn Tigers, and Ole Miss would like to take advantage of that today. Towards Sanford, the fullback, on first down, picked up a yard or two to the 34-yard line. Now, one thing, I, I, when we were talking to the coaches about Eli Manning and his offense, they said he goes through the same routine. He just he just kind of just sets up his offense really, really well and doesn't show whether it's going to be a run or a pass. Sitting in the stands, Archie Manning, one of the great all-time quarterbacks, uh, a legendary figure. There's his wife, Olivia. Olivia's over there on his right. Looks like I, he had a radio problem, yeah. though. Archie did with that headset. Yeah. I can tell you, everybody talks about Archie, but Olivia had a lot to do with that, uh, that threesome. Robert Williams, the intended receiver, and I guarantee Eli Manning didn't throw one like that last week no. against Murray State. He no, it's interesting. Was we were talking about in our workups what he missed the first two passes, right. then completed 18 in a row. Unbelievable. And how about David Cutcliffe? I mean, he gets the coach, Peyton Manning, which is like a once-in-a-lifetime dream. Comes from Tennessee down here, and he gets Eli Manning. Uh, his, his, his dream just continues. Seven years of coaching a Manning at quarterback for David Cutcliffe, and he's got this young fella for three more. Saw four dropping back. Dreyfog will be intended receiver, and the ball is through his hands. Travaris Robinson was uh, on the move, and Freifogel may have heard footsteps. Well, he looked like he did. The ball was thrown maybe a little bit behind him. But again, that's a very catchable ball. Look at this. It's a rope right to him. you got to come down with that. you got to help your quarterback. He's on a crossing pattern. Nobody in front of him. you just got to come down with that. Now, Auburn says, hey, we drove the ball 60, 70 yards. We came up with nothing. See if they don't go right back to what they did so well in that first drive. Freshman Cody Ridgway, first punt of the afternoon. Watkins, well, he's a threat every time he touches the football, and you can see why. He has a knack, Dave, of, of making people miss it. And then he can really turn on the Jets. Eli Manning, frustrating first series for the Ole Miss Rebels. We'll be back. When everyone else is heading south for the winter, it's still summer at Sonic. This month at Sonic, it's Pink Flamingo Month, where you can keep summer alive with Sonic's refreshing new Pink Flamingo drink with real lemons and fresh strawberries, or create your favorite flavors from thousands of cool combinations. This month, any large drink is only 99 cents. So hurry in for a last taste of summer. And for more great Sonic flavor, try our Bacon Cheddar Burger Toaster Sandwich. You take the recliner. Ah, my man G. My man Miles. That's all you brought? <laughs> green chair. So I had the green chair yeah, last time. You brought the sorry dip last time. Oh, see, that's cold. That's, that's cold. game started? Hey, sweet thing. No beer, no nothing? I forgot. No entry. Well, like your grandmother? Pay-per-view. Ice House style. We make the smooth, never watered down taste of Ice House for guys like you. Oh, you just lost the recliner, be dog good is beauty if it's only skin deep? The new Camry, reinvented so it's sleeker, faster, roomier, better. You're gonna want one. See your local Toyota dealer. John worked tirelessly searching for the perfect thin crust pizza. Oh, it's good, but it's not perfect. Mom. Love the crust, but... Mom. That's cute, Bo. But what evaded one of the so-called greatest minds Mom, in the Daddy. pizza business was obvious to a child. Mom. I got an idea. And a thin crust piled high with more quality Papa John's toppings was born. Oh, great. What took me so long? Better ingredients? Better pizza? Papa John's. 
When you're on the road to watch SEC football this season, plan on eating at Huddle House, where you can order their big house breakfast and lunch platters anytime, 24 hours a day. Scoreless from Auburn with a roaring crowd in attendance at Jordan Hare oh. Stadium. I want to tell you, you hear a lot of you hear a lot of noise around the SEC. This crowd is as loud as you could ever imagine. And Brown hit behind the line of scrimmage. It looked like Josh Cooper came up. Big number 99, the sophomore from Marietta, Georgia. Let's go to the sideline, check in with Warren Pepper. Hey, Dave, the quarterback for Auburn, Jason Campbell, is a guy that uh, has not really been the primary focus this week, as you might imagine. As a matter of fact, some of the coaches all week long have kind of said, Jason, who are you? Jason who? Uh, does anybody know you're even in this game? He probably could have played college basketball. He's pretty committed right now at 6'4", 220 to this game right here. I'll say Campbell, a great athlete. You know, Dave, I think some of that, and Warren, I think some of that goes back to the days of Archie who. Remember that day for Tim Sullivan. Tim Sullivan at Auburn, Archie Manning at Ole Miss, and uh, the Auburn folks threw a, a big Archie who campaign when those two teams played uh, in the, I guess, the 71 Gator Bowl. Yeah, there's the Archie who. Look up here, Archie. Wave at me. <laughs> he's, not, he's not locked into our audio. He's not locked into any audio. No, he's just relaxing and enjoying the game. It's got to really be a, a real thrill for him and uh, Olivia to just to watch and sit and watch their son play so well. But that was funny in talking with Jason Campbell. It's like, he said, Coach kept on saying, Archie who? I mean, Jason who? He goes, well, we're trying to get to the young fella fired up for this week on third down. He's throwing and completing the pass for the first down to DeAndre Green. And that's really the first time that Ole Miss has gotten some pressure on Campbell. He made him step up in the pocket. He had to hurry a little bit that time. You've got to get penetration. You've got to get somebody free. Look over here. Somebody's going to come up and make him step up. Now, right there, you don't get those feet squared down on the ground. He's a young kid. He's got a great arm. You can get away with that with a great arm, but uh, again, just that's the first time they've hurried him. The green four yards short of the first down, so David Duval will be on to punt it for the first time today. Looking at an All-American here, but his first punt is end over end. Oh, watch this. Great save inside the five-yard line. Robinson kept it in play, and Auburn downs it at the two-yard line. A 56-yard punt by Damon Duvall. So the Ole Miss Rebels backed up inside their five-yard line thanks to a great punt back after a message from Advance Auto Park. Turtle Wax. Grizzly Grill Guards. Rancho Shocks. Gas cans. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. We need some help. We need a lot of help. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. To keep your business moving in the right direction, you need to make the best decisions about your image. Fast Signs offers sign and graphic solutions to make your choices simple. With locations coast to coast, Fast Signs is ready to keep your business moving. Fast Signs, sign and graphic solutions made simple. Call, click, or visit a Fast Signs location near you. skin deep. The new Camry. Reinvented so it's sleeker, faster, roomier, better. You're going to want one. See your local Toyota dealer. Ole Miss Rebels, Auburn 
Tigers scoreless late in the first quarter. It's Ole Miss's second possession of the first period. Auburn has dominated the time of possession. And Eli Manning's Rebels are backed up at their own two-yard line with a roaring crowd behind them. Well, I might try one run if I'm Eli Manning, but I'm going to throw the ball out of here. And hand it off to the fullback, Stackhouse. And he is stacked up after a gain of about a yard. Well, Ole Miss came with the two tight ends, and they're just trying to blow him off, get a little bit of room to, to operate. But see, I think when you get down here and you've got a quarterback that's that accurate, hey, just play that little play fake action in the line, see if you can get one of those wide outs one on one. That's how you pick up yardage. Two tight ends, one wide out, two backs behind Eli Manning. Ontarius Thomas. Gazing over the offensive line for the Auburn Tigers. And the handoff is to Gunn. And Gunn knocked down at about the six-yard line. They're well short of a first down. It'll be third down coming up for Ole Miss. Boy, Ontario, Ontario Thomas may be one of the best linebackers in this league. I mean, he moves to the football well. Look at number 54. Look at him slide. Nobody gets to his feet. Look at that square up in the hole. I mean, he was not a greatly recruited player coming into this league. Wow, does he play? I like the way he slides the line of scrimmage. He's got great speed and a motor that never shuts off. Ole Miss third, uh, third down conversion opportunity in the afternoon. And rolling in the end zone. The pass is caught by Sturmetta, but he is knocked down behind the line of scrimmage by Roderick Hood of Auburn. Boy, and Collier got great pressure on Eli Manning. What they were going to do is they were going to do it like a reverse out. Watch this little play fake here. Now reverse out. Look at 51. That's Collier. He's right in his face. He knows when he's going when he's going to throw the football. He's got somebody pressure him. He has to hide. He just has to hustle. That was a great move, moving Collier from linebacker out the defensive end. They really like the way he comes off the ball. Quick 30-second timeout taken by Auburn. Yeah, and the old Miss players all went over to the far sideline. They thought it was one of the regular timeouts. Hunter said, hey, wait a minute. Get back here. Manning on the sideline talking with uh, head coach David Cutcliffe. Boy, and if you need a punt right now, Old Miss needs a punt. Richway only averaged, what, 34 yards last week. He, he can hit it long, but uh, he needs a big one right here. Looking at the uh, the flag at the top of the stadium, which is not always a true indication of what's happening down low, but it looks like there's a cross breeze right to left. There's the flag. Right to left for Ridgeway. And then you've got Joe Watkins, number 19, back there returning it. We know what he can do. He averaged 18 yards per punt return last week against Ball State. Low snap, Ridgeway fields it. Oh, not a good punt, not a good punt at all. Look at this. And a bad bounce for Ole Miss. Look at the field position that Auburn will have when the second quarter begins from Jordan Hare Stadium at the Ole Miss 23-yard line after a 15-yard punt by the freshman. The kicking game could be critical today with All-American Damon Duvall against the freshman Ridgeway for Ole Miss. Great field position for the Tigers when we come back. We'll be back after this word from your local station. What makes these air conditioners so reliable? Rely on Rood. It's Rood's 100-year tradition of reliability. And it's the super durable scroll compressor built into every Rood reliable air conditioner, ensuring years of quiet, ultra-efficient operation. There's a Rood reliable air conditioner for every need. For a limited time, free 10-year parts and labor warranty on premium equipment. Call for the Rood reliable dealer near you.
Honey. <laughs> what are you doing? Joe Hudson's Collision Centers. There's one near you. InTouch Communications wants you to get more from your wireless service. That's why InTouch wants to introduce you to Voice Stream Wireless, where you get more from life. Get 500 anytime minutes plus 2,000 weekend minutes for just $39.99 per month. Plus, get free roaming and long distance on the GSM network. With each new activation, InTouch, a Voice Stream authorized dealer, will give you a car lighter adapter, earbud, and carrying case free. Get more from Voice Stream Wireless and InTouch Communications in Montgomery, Prattville, Alexander City, and now in Auburn. We're back to begin the second quarter from Auburn, Alabama, the loveliest village on the plain. And a great crowd this afternoon, a sun-soaked early September crowd, and they've watched a scoreless tie, but Auburn has great field position now to start the second quarter after a short punt by Ole Miss. Now, watch Auburn. They're not going to make that same mistake and try to force the ball in. Ole Miss, they got to come up on the line and stop it. Ronnie Brown shoots one tackle, but not another to the 19. Gain of four. The tackle made by Jesse Mitchell. And Dave, if you're in that defensive side of the huddle, as they string it out along the line, that's what you want to do. Make them bounce it to the outside. Don't let them step up. Just keep on working them east and west and come down with the play. But if you're in that defensive huddle right now, you're saying, hey, the best we can do is hope to hold them for it to a field goal try. If they do that, that's a great defensive stand. And I would look for Ole Miss to get up on that line of scrimmage. I just think they're going to get up there and start pressuring them a little bit. They've got to get to the quarterback. There's Eddie Strong, the leader of this Ole Miss defense. Second down for the shotgun. And Campbell cannot connect with Walkins. And I'm not sure they had much going if they had completed the pass. Let's take a look at the Cat Reynolds first quarter stance looking like this as uh, the Auburn Tigers outgaining the Ole Miss Rebels 35 to 13 and rushing 40 to 7 in passing but still a scoreless game look at the time of possession yeah well that was that first drive 75 yards in that first drive to come up empty big down here for both sides the young quarterback for Auburn out of the shotgun again he found Watkins but Watkins couldn't find the football Oh, that's the that's the old day. Everybody in football talks about that. That's when you look downfield before you look the ball in. Coaches will tell you you've got to look the ball in. Heads up play by Campbell. Watch this. Move around the pocket now. Knows he's not going to make it. Look at this throw out here in the flat. Look how wide open he is. If he just catches it there and falls down, he's got the first down. And look at the reaction by Jason Campbell. Oh boy. That's just one of those ones you just got to scratch up and put it over in the loss column. Got to come away with some points when you get the opportunity, and that's what Auburn needs to do right now. A 37-yard attempt from Duvall, and it is good. He is almost automatic. He did have one block last week against Ball State, but he is very effective, and he puts Auburn on the scoreboard early in the second quarter. It is now 3-0, the Auburn Tigers. Well, you talk about momentum in a football game like this, and it's a huge game. A lot of hype coming into the game. The Manning situation and Auburn turning the corner and getting back to with the younger players. But there's momentum swings back and forth. And what happened there was Ole Miss, they answered the call. They stopped them, held them to a field goal. So that's big. But Auburn came away with points, so that's big on their side. And a kicking game critical in that oh. situation. Duvall gets off a 59-yard punt, backs Ole Miss up inside the five-yard line. Ole Miss is unable to get a first down, and they wind up punting from inside the 10, and Ridgeway has a short punt setting up the three points. Next week, the Vanderbilt Commodores, the Ole Miss Rebels, a 12.30 start time, Eastern Standard Time, Southeastern Conference football on Jefferson Pilot Sports. Vandy coming close to the upset victory against Alabama today. Much better performance. Woody Woodenhopper's ball club than their opener. Yeah, the, the opener. State. The opener, they had 600 yards run to, or ran against them offense. This game here, they played just toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alabama and could have tied the score late in the game with that field goal had they made it. So uh, Vanderbilt, a much improved team. That's Robert Williams from the goal line. And down he goes at the 20 yard line well a lot of pressure on this youngster Eli Manning a lot of folks comparing him to his brother Peyton Manning 
since, uh, since he played there. So, um, I mean, obviously, he's got a big name there and, uh, and will for a long time. So, I mean, you, just, you don't hear a lot about it. I mean, I probably, I probably get more being Peyton's little brother than being uh, some of my dad's still. Just, and uh, I guess it's more recent. I'm not sure he knows all that much about his, uh, yeah. his his dad's great legacy back in the late 60s and 1970 season. Gone on a receiving end to the 24-yard line, a gain of four yards on first down. You know, that looked like a simple pass, but did you see the way the guy had Manning up by the shirt, pulling him down, and he throws that football out there, and it was a perfect strike. That's the strength that he has. As he comes out of the pocket, he's going to feel pressure right in here by on his right. Now watch him come out here and look at the left shoulder. He's got him just pulled down, rakes across that shoulder a little bit, and squares up and throws it. Nice play. Yeah, you know, the funny thing about Peyton, he used to be able to tell, tell you all about his dad's things, the little old, the, the redhead from Drew, and uh, could relive those radio broadcasts. But uh, Eli, not in that same game, uh, frame of mind. He said, well, Dad, you were 30 years ago. And Eli Manning, a, a different personality than his brother Peyton. Oh, absolutely. Peyton, a very outgoing, vocal guy, and Eli very quiet, unassuming, soft-spoken. But he can really play this game, and it's going to be a big third down play coming up. I thought it really interesting. He called home last week, and his dad said, great game. Did you see the, see the papers? He said, no, I didn't get to read them. <laughs> 20 of 23, five touchdowns, and he didn't read the papers. Ball deflected and oh. caught. Oh, never met him. I think let's a... see who's got it. That was unbelievable. Auburn's got the football. A deflection, a catch, and a fumble. A full in one sequence. Oh, unbelievable. The ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Then it's completed to number 90, Skermetta. Watch this. It's a little dump pass over top of the middle just to pick up the first down. There, the ball's tipped. Now watch. It bounces there. Now watch this. It's going to bounce off of Simmons, number eight. Skermetta comes down with it, then fumbles it back. Oh, mercy. Travaris Robinson forced the fumble. McNeil recovered it, and McNeil oh. is the guy that tipped it at the line of scrimmage. How many times was that ball? Let's see. Tipped, almost caught, caught, fumbled. Oh, gosh. What a turnaround. Well, in great field position again is Ronnie Brown. Steps out of bounds. He got hit. He got hit five yards out of bounds, and there's the flag. Oh, you can't do that. You cannot do that. You see the official pushing all the Auburn players back. Don't worry, they're in they're in good control here. You just can't do that. Oliver, I mean, he hit some creep. That little white spot there. That's a dead ball. Personal foul. 15 yards tacked on to the end of the play. Out. A freshman mistake by the youngster out of Jasper, Alabama. Well, you see that white turf right there? That's about three yards. Again, you see the white sideline. He's out of bounds. I mean, it's a heck of a... You see him kind of ease off. He knows it at the tail end. But that doesn't correct it. Now, if you're Auburn, you've got to take advantage of this. You don't want to come away with three points. You want seven. If you're Ole Miss, you're saying, hey, hold him to a field goal try. Brown cuts back to the inside. Drives the ball to the 13-yard line before Kenny Jackson brings him down. Boy, what a starting position. Look at that. Where would you like to start? How about on your own 45? You only got five years of yards to go and you're in the other team's uh, area. And Tommy Coverville knows yeah, when you get down here, you have got to take advantage of it. You cannot come up with field goals. Official Al Ford stopping uh, the play. I think they called timeout. Might have been equipment timeout. A lot of discussion going on yeah. down there. Kendall Simmons having a, a discussion with Al Ford. And now Tommy Tuberville out on the field. He's not very happy about something. Simmons rips his helmet off and heads to the Auburn sideline. I'm wondering what... Boy, he is upset. Look at him, the big man. He is upset. 
You don't want to get him upset. That's not somebody I was no. going to say you want to make angry. He's who you you like to take down a dark alley. You want to have him. Look at him. He's still upset. Don't talk to me, equipment man. <laughs> I'm wondering what, the, what it is. Well, we've got a timeout on the field as uh, we try to sort things out. Kendall Simmons still steaming on the Auburn sideline. Let's check in with Warren Pepper. Warren? Yeah, the actual uh, problem there is an equipment technicality. The shirt tail out oh. on Simmons. Now, some of the problem was that it, I th they think they got him another one, to tell you the truth. But uh, they had a little equipment problem. The referee called it immediately, said his shirt tail is not tucked in. And that cost him. And Kendall turned around, Warren, and said, hey, I'm a big man. When I stretch my arms out, I'm going to pull that shirt out. But, yeah, we saw him tucking it in on the sideline. Look right there. There it is. You see, oh, you see how the back of it's sitting down there? That's what they're arguing about right there. The back of his shirt is sticking out. Boy, the big man's hot. You know what I'd do? I'd run behind him this time. <laughs> if he's that mad, he's going to take it out on somebody. It's second down for the 13, and they run it to the left side behind uh, the big tackle, Kendall Simmons, and uh, down to the 11-yard line is uh, Ronnie Brown. Boy, the big man coming Cicinius off the ball. Moore, rather, the ball carrier for the first time today, number 22. Well, let's take a look at some other scores. Earlier today here on J.P. Sports, Alabama nosing past Vanderbilt 12-9 in a battle of field goal kicking. Number four, Texas all over North Carolina. Virginia Tech shutting out Western Michigan. Wow. Fresno State, 3-0. Yeah. Oh, big victory for a surprise team, certainly in college football. Third down for the Tigers. Campbell steps up. There's room up the middle. He is inside the five to the four-yard line of the Rebels. Eddie Strong is able to save the touchdown for the Rebels. Well, Jason Campbell is a kid who rushed for over 500 yards in high school, and now you'll see why. When you get back here, you see his eyes move to his right and then back to his left. Now, pull the ball down, find a little seam, and the big man can run, protect the football, come down, get that first down. That's a heads-up play. That's a real winner when you can do that. You just see it's not there, tuck it down, and you don't expect that out of freshmen. Cassinius Moore. Well, this Ole Miss defense is swarming out here today. Give them credit. They've given up only a field goal, and uh, their field position has been horrible. Matt well, Greer made the, the stop for the Rebels. And credit Charlie Anderson, number 85. He's the one who turned it back inside. He got good outside leverage, took his blocker, didn't get cut down, and the, and the running back, as he took it to the outside, he ran into that pile and had to cut back inside. All right, quickly to the sideline, Warren into the game uh, just moments ago they were able to tape up his left thumb he had a scratch on it but he's missed the last three four plays he's back in now that's Brown the tailback taking the handoff well he loves to run between the tackles doesn't he or side to five to about the three well he's got the speed to get outside and that's what they really like about him in talking with the coaches yesterday Noel Mazzoni said hey he's a slasher he doesn't take those big hits he likes to get to the outside but he said, I like to see him run up inside, too, when he sees that little seam. And of course, when you're following number 73 and number 75, <laughs> that's, that's a lot to do. There's Noel Mazzoni, the uh, offensive coordinator. Great, fun guy to talk to. He said, I came in from cutting my lawn yesterday just to talk to you guys. <laughs> Delightful guy. Yes. Great football coach. Third down for the Tigers inside the five. Oh, force him outside. They do a great job again. Get him to the outside. Oh, tremendous pursuit yeah. by this Ole Miss defense. Kevin Thomas uh, is the, the man that stretched it out, and then Marcus Woodson was there to knock him out of bounds. We'll watch, get another look. Yeah, watch 38. Run the line down here. See, run the line right like that. Now, force him outside. Don't let him get up inside. That's just a great job. And when you've got the speed of a Ronnie Brown, you're thinking if he can dip inside, get to the outside. But you've got to make that outside block to get that corner. So for Ole Miss, it's two victories to a degree. Three and three if he makes this one. And boy, two foul is great. This one's from 25 yards out, right in front of the sticks. And Duvall, two out of two. He had plenty of leg on that one, oh. didn't he? And Auburn leads it six to nothing. They've dominated this game in terms of time of possession. 
but now have settled for just field goals on two occasions and threw one interception inside the 10-yard line early in the game. We'll be back. When everyone else is heading south for the winter, it's still summer at Sonic. This month at Sonic, it's Pink Flamingo Month, where you can keep summer alive with Sonic's refreshing new Pink Flamingo drink with real lemons and fresh strawberries. Or create your favorite flavors from thousands of cool combinations. This month, any large drink is only 99 cents. So hurry in for a last taste of summer. And for more great Sonic flavor, try our bacon cheddar burger toaster sandwich. Pizza. That's right. You take the return. Ah, my man G. My man Miles. That's all you brought? <laughs> green chair. So I had the green chair yeah, last time. You brought time. that sorry dip last time. Oh, see, that's cold. That's, that's game started? Hey, sweet thing. No beer, no nothing? I forgot. No entry. Oh, like your grandmother? Pay-per-view. Ice House style. We make the smooth, never watered down taste of Ice House for guys like you. Oh, you just locked the recliner, yeah. B-Dog. You may not make it to the big time, but you can make it to the big game with Altel. Just enter for a chance to win Altel's ultimate football fantasy sweepstakes. You and three lucky friends could get VIP tickets and treatment at one of this season's biggest games. So make a play for the nearest Altel store today. We'll get you in on all the action. is beauty if it's only skin deep. The new Camry reinvented so it's sleeker, faster, roomier, better. You're going to want one. See your local Toyota dealer. The Auburn Tiger fans are uh, out in force today. They put 86,000 plus in uh, Jordan Hare Stadium. They added a few to the top row, and their capacity increased by a little over 1,000 this year. Archie Manning has not had a lot to, to cheer about so far. Duvall kicking it away. Woo, and yeah, into the way. way. Wow. You know how far that is? Wow. Well, we watched him warm up. He was kicking 61-yard field goals uh, in the pregame warm-up. What about the freshman Jason Campbell, the red shirt from Taylorsville, Mississippi, doing a little bit of everything for Auburn today? Yes, he is. He makes good decisions. The only one he really forced was that one that was intercepted, but pulled the ball down when he needed it, scrambles for the first down. He's a real leader. And for Jefferson Pilot today, this is a day of field goals. Field goal only. Goodness today. gracious. Uh, seven in the game at Vanderbilt, and two more here in, uh, in Auburn. Nine field goals, two games. This is our day. And he's trying to jump strike this Ole Miss offense. Joe Gunn, the ball carrier. And uh, the senior picks up a couple of yards to about the 23-yard line. Well, the announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. That means we get paid for this. I hope so. We got the best seat in the house and we get paid. All right, I like it. Big down here. You got to throw the football. Got to keep them loose. Oh, they may have gotten a free five yards. Trying to get the ball to the fullback, Sanford. His feet got tangled up, but uh, I think you're right. I think they, they had a free one here. Yeah, good voice inflection by young Eli Manning. Come up to the up to the line of scrimmage, change the snap count, remind your lineman in the huddle. Come up and say, hey, it's on three, on three. Come up there, emphasize that second count, and you draw them all sides and get a free five. Other game from around the Southeastern Conference. Kentucky gets his first win of the season after falling last week in the game you and Dave Neal worked uh, against Louisville. Well, good to see that for Guy Morris, turning that system around, trying to put a lot of life into it and have some defense. So it's good to see him have some success. Robert Williams trying to dive over the middle uh, to pick up the first down, but he is well short to about the 29-yard line. I'm getting anxious. I want to see Eli Manning throw the ball. 
I mean, we, we heard all about it from both his kid coaches, and we heard it from the other coaches, from the Auburn coaches, what a fantastically accurate quarterback he is. Third down and one, you almost have to run it, but boy, I'd like to see him pull the ball down and start throwing. Auburn stacked up at the line. Got to make the 30. Williams denied. I don't think he got it. No, he didn't make it. Boy, and you credit that big defensive line of Auburn getting underneath there. Sims and Jackson, Cooper and Anderson underneath. No penetration there, no real seam. Pullback lead up the middle, and you can see he stopped short. Good follow-up in there. This big defensive lineman getting down hard. Going to make Eli Manning and company give the football up. Boy, I tell you, the pressure does mount. When you start talking about the pressure mounting, boy, it can mount. Cody Ridgeway has had a couple of uh, short punts. And Watkins, very dangerous, standing back at the 25-yard line. End over end by the freshman. Watkins wants to return it and will from the 38. He's bounced down at the 39-yard line. Boy, and no. that's where Auburn will take over. Matt Greer made the stop. And it is six to nothing. Auburn leading the Ole Miss Rebels from Auburn, Alabama. Back after a word from your local station. You can't beat a can-do deal. It's back. Zero percent interest. Get zero percent financing up to 60 months on all 2001 Isuzu rodeos. Save thousands on Central Alabama's best selection of Isuzu. Isuzu offering the 10-year, 120,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Let our experienced staff help you select that special SUV today. Go farther in a brand new Isuzu from Magoo. This is the new Suzuki Quadmaster 500, and while our supplies last at Adams Motorsports, we'll give you this ATV tilt trailer when you buy a new Quadmaster 500. That's a $599 value free. Suzuki invented the four-wheel ATV and has been building them longer than anyone. Hurry, our supplies limited. Buy a new Suzuki Quadmaster 500 and get a $599 tilt trailer absolutely free. It's Adams Motorsports, where your pleasure is our business. Visit our website at adamsmotorsports.com. Buy now and get a free $599 tilt trailer. Wooden interior and exterior shutters add beauty and value to your home. And the finest made shutters by far come from Southern Shutter Company. Locally owned for 35 years, Southern Shutter now sells directly to the public and manufactures all shutters start to finish. Our attention to detail assures you of top quality lifetime warranty real wood shutters made to your specifications. And at Southern Shutter Company, there's no job too large or too small. For your free on-site estimate on the finest in interior or exterior shutters, call Southern Shutter Company. 1954 saw the beginning of a new tradition when J.H. Skeeter Stokes purchased a Chevrolet dealership in Clamour. Since then, three generations have personally ensured the satisfaction of each and every customer. This is a family-owned business, and the decades of dedication to quality could only have come from generation after generation, building on a tradition started so many years ago by Skeeter Stokes. Hi, I'm Kirk Stokes from Stokes and Clanton. Take the short drive from Montgomery and do business with a dealer that's been doing it right since 1954. And welcome back to Jordan-Hare Stadium with the score. Auburn 6 nothing here, a little over seven minutes in the second quarter. Don Lindsay, a name, the defensive coordinator we've referenced once or twice in the broadcast. He in his first year with Ole Miss. Nobody really always knows what to expect of him. He's kind of a seat-of-the-pants guy. He does do it by not stats but attitude, and he says their motto this year is win on D, count on me. That's a good one. Yeah, I like that one. Don Lindsay... Uh... Last week was down on the field as defensive coordinator. Moved upstairs this week. Trying to get a little better action from his team. See what's going on out there. Carter, Tim Carter, oh. the intended receiver, and the ball was just thrown out of his reach. Hey, I got I to gotta correct an oops. I gave a lot of credit to, the, uh, to some defensive players, but really that was Auburn's defensive line down there on that last stand. It was Auburn's defensive line. This is wide open. Look at look at Jason Campbell. Ooh, right there. But again, that that defensive stand was by Mills, McNeil, Johnson, and Callier, not the other guys. Although they're playing pretty good. I just want to apologize to their parents. Absolutely. They're back home saying, "Wait a minute, that's my son, Marco McNeil." In there. Well, they shut out Ball State last week, and so far they've surrendered no points to Ole Miss. Oh, a lot of time. Look at this. Just sit back and throw. And Watkins makes the catch. 
near the first down marker at the 49-yard line. Oh, the Auburn offense with the great protection for the freshman quarterback, Jason Campbell. Look at this. You try to get the pass off in 2.5 seconds. That's three or four seconds where you're able to sit back there. Then you got them wide open. They find a little seams in that zone. Again, look at this. Trying to push. You got to get rid of them. You got to throw them to the side. You got to do swim moves. Get penetration. Make that quarterback step up and run around in there. If you're not, you're going to have a long day in the passing game. Now, even the, the Seneker Taylor, as good as he is in the secondary, you're not going to be able to cover anybody that long. Absolutely. And that is a first down for the Auburn offense. Tommy Tuberville's team has yet to put the ball into the end zone. A pair of Damon Duvall field goals have the Auburn Tigers up six to nothing in the second quarter. And Eli Manning and the Ole Miss Ooh. offense uh, stifled so wow. far by an that. Auburn defense that gave up, what, just 60 Sweet. yards total last week? Wow, that's a lot 92 of 92 total, 62 on, oh, the, fumble. on the ground. Auburn got it back. Ronnie Brown. A loss of about a yard. And it's an interesting offensive scheme by Auburn. They came out with the tight ends. They talked to us about going three tight ends. And this is just single back. Just let them find a hole. The ball foul falls on the hip. You know you make a pocket with that inside arm up, and the quarterback's supposed to stick it right on your belly button. That time he missed. Second down 10 again. Got to stop him. Oh, good penetration that time. I tell you, Ole Miss's defense. Yeah, they have made life tough. On the Auburn Tigers, there's another late flag. But Don Lindsay has got to be pleased with the way that his team has played early here against an Auburn team that uh, figures to be a better offensive team than Murray State was last week. Yeah. That time, that was Josh Cooper, number 99, who got in there. He got great penetration, dropped his man in the backfield, and the running back just can't get around. But now what's the flag? Usually they go against the offense for a late hit or something like that. And it's a big one, dead ball, personal foul. Mm. Will drive a coach crazy. Tommy Tuberville and his headset off talking to the line judge. And David Cutcliffe says, Keep it up, guys. You uh, have done a great job yeah. against this Auburn offense so far. That big and uh, experienced offensive line. Ben Nowell in the center, Mike Basillo and Hart McGarry, the guards. Rittenden, the only youngster in that front line. And Kendall Simmons, the left tackle. They can create a lot of problems. Now you got third get, and long. Got to get penetration. There you go. Another flag down as Campbell wrapped up at the 35-yard line. Charlie Anderson got there first, and they had, had plenty of help from his friends. Yeah, that's going to be a hold back there, and you, you would almost as sure think that uh, Ole Miss will decline that. Eddie Strong, the defensive captain, stepping up in there to make the decision. Block below the, the waist, below the knees is the call, and uh, Ole Miss will decline the penalty. Now Ford will keep him straight in there. The veteran Southeastern Conference crew here today. And it'll be fourth down and long for the Auburn Tigers. So another good job uh, by the Ole Miss defense with little help. Uh, by the uh, penalty flags thrown. Duvall will punt it away from about his own 25-yard line. Now, when you have a strong kicker like this, a lot of times you can get a good return. Jason Armstead, a, a good return man for the Rebels. And the first time he's had a chance to carry oh. the ball, and he fumbles it. Was he down? I thought he might be down, but the officials are... Oh, they're giving it to him. Auburn football inside the 30-yard line. Wow. A big hit by Brandon Johnson. And that should come as no surprise. He is a physical, physical football player. A ball back, a linebacker, and on special teams just made a big hit for the Auburn Tigers. They call him the wild man, and he is a wild man in there. Brandon Johnson, number 45. He will smoke you. Watch this hit right here. There's the backside. See if the ball comes out. There's the ball right there. Let's give some credit there. 87 is who pulled that ball out, I think. That's Robert Johnson yeah. and then Spencer Johnson. Yeah. Keep there's it in the, the man who recovered it. <laughs> so Auburn has great field position again. And Damon Duvall 
likes what he sees. Campbell fakes the handoff, rolling out. This is uh, designed for the run. Well, I tell you, Pasillo was out there in front of him. A flag drops late on the play. Campbell, big yardage on first down. And that flag is thrown back around the 25-yard line. Think there might have been a hold on that play? If you're an old Miss fan, you're sure hoping so. Their defense is winded. They've been out here a long time. If you're Tommy Tupperville, you're saying, oh, no. Another penalty against the Auburn Tiger offense. Wow, and that ball, that 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 line of scrimmage, that was back at the 25-yard line. That'll take it all the way out to about the 35-yard line. Now it's on the back side, right over in the back side there. Yeah, it's actually behind that play. Might have been a push in the back. But they but uh, Al Ford indicated a hold. Auburn penalized four times now. From their 35, Ronnie Brown brought down at the 29-yard line by Cooper. Boy, and wasn't he a joy to talk to yesterday, Ronnie Brown. Just a lot of fun. Sat in there, very humble. Just uh, said, I'm just going to, I just want to win. I want to do whatever my team needs. I said, what's it feel like looking in the huddle? And, uh, you know, you're a redshirt freshman. He says, hey, everybody else back there is young, too. <laughs> a good kid. Of course, Jason Campbell's a redshirt freshman. Brandon Johnson's just a sophomore. Auburn lost a lot last year, didn't they, Dave? Yeah, they did. The All-Southeastern Conference quarterback, Ben Lear. Rudy Johnson, Heath Evans, their leading receiver, Ronnie Daniels. Quick toss to Carter. They saw oh. the screenplay. Carter makes a couple of men miss him. And finally, Eddie Strong drops him at the 15-yard line. But it's first and 10 for the Auburn Tigers. Well, and that's a, this is almost an underneath screen where you try to throw it underneath and let him come back underneath the block. Look right in here. But he just turns it right upfield and gets the yardage. Nice heads-up play. Can't give him that much yardage. Can't give him that much of a cushion. And Carter, the man with great speed, making the play to the 15-yard line. Auburn threatening to score again, hoping to take advantage of an Ole Miss mistake and leading it already 6 to nothing. Hi, I need to run a skid steer loader. Oh, okay, sir. We have those. Whoa! Do you have scissor lifts? I sure do. What about welders? Got them. Cement mixers. Yep, right over there. Concrete saws? Yep. Generators? Tampers? Pumps? It's skid steer day. Stop by your cat rental store and register to win a free week's rental of a cat skid steer for your business. Light towers. Oh, yeah. Is it 516 or 930 seconds? Does it take a standard socket or metric? What you need is the Gator Grip, the amazing socket that works on over 1,000 nuts, bolts, and fasteners. Watch, no matter what size fastener, nut, bolt, wing nut, square nut, eye bolt, hook, most anything, Gator Grip holds on tight to finish the job. Now hang a plant, work under the hood, or set up a Christmas tree stand quickly and easily. The secret are these retractable steel rods that form to fit most any size or shape standard or metric. Even damaged and stripped bolts are no problem. Amazing! You get the Gator Grip with this heavy-duty ratcheting handle for only $19.95. Plus, we'll include this adapter for your power drills and drivers free. Gator Grip comes with a lifetime replacement warranty. If it ever fails, we'll replace it free for life. Call 1-800-495-7117 to order your Gator Grip for just $19.95 or send check or money order to this address. Call 1-800-495-7117. We go for Alabama! We go for Auburn! But there's one thing we both agree on. Go at Chevrolet! That's the winning team! Don't let the short distance to Camden keep you from the big savings. Let McGraw-Webb Chevrolet pass the savings to you! War Eagle! Roll time! War Johnny Webb won't like this, but my dad will. War Eagle! McGraw-Webb Chevrolet, two locations in Camden to serve you. Auburn leading Ole Miss 6 to nothing, late in the second quarter. And redshirt freshman quarterback Jason Campbell stands under center at the Ole Miss 15-yard line. Cassinius Moore up the middle. Battles his way to the 10-yard line, a gain of five on first down. 
You want to see yeah. a remarkable statistic here, Dave. <laughs> the time of possession, Auburn dominating. Oh, they led the SEC in time of possession last year. And Eli Manning has barely had an opportunity to direct this uh, Ole Miss offense. And when he has, Auburn has done a great job on defense against them. And maybe that's why uh, Ole Miss has 39 yards. And Auburn's got more. Auburn's got six. Cassinius more. To be specific about it, into the end zone. Finally, a touchdown today. Yeah. Well, it's a big hole in the middle, and they're wearing them down up front. We talked about the great size differential there. Old Miss is outmanned, 25, 30 man, pounds of man, and they're wearing them down. But this is big up front. Look at this. Just give them. They can find that little hole. When you run like that, there's a big hole in the middle. You talk about a big hole in the middle. I could have run this one in. Look at the size right in here. There's where he's coming. Boom. Look at that. Backside. He's just looking for the hole. He runs in virtually untouched. A 10-yard run for Moore. The sophomore from Anniston, Alabama. That's his first touchdown for the Auburn Tigers. Auburn going for two. Oh, yeah. and, uh, Did they run out of clock? A flag. I wonder if they if they took too much time. Oh. Now you almost have to kick the extra point. Here comes the kick yeah. team. Young quarterback. Woo. Tommy Tuberville won't like that. You see him right down there in the bottom corner? Look at him. He's mad. <laughs> That's what you call stomping. You don't want to stand near near the coach. He's upset. Look at him. Talk to one of his assistants. You got to get that two-point play off. You've got to be thinking of that before you get in that situation. So now Duvall will try and get the extra point from the 15-yard line. A 25-yard uh, extra point is good by Damon Duvall. And the Auburn Tigers continue their domination in the first half against the Ole Miss Rebels. Their defense stifling today. And now Tommy Tuberville's offense puts a touchdown on the board to go with a pair of Duvall field goals. And the Auburn Tigers lead it by the score of 13 to nothing. Well, let's take you back a few years, back to 1971. This great Auburn Ole Miss series, the 71 Gator Bowl between the Tigers and the Rebels, matching two of the greatest quarterbacks in Southeastern Conference history. The Tigers, Pat Sullivan, the Rebels, Archie Manning. Sullivan passed for 351 yards and a pair of touchdowns, including one to his favorite receiver, All-American Terry Beasley. Manning had 275 yards of total offense, one touchdown on the ground, one through the air. This one to Floyd Franks. The Tigers came out on top 35-28. By the way, a plastic sleeve was on Manning's left arm, which was broken earlier in the season. That was 1971, the Gator Bowl between Auburn and Ole Miss. And boy, what great rivalry oh, Auburn and Ole Miss had back then with Pat Sullivan, Archie Manning, Terry Beasley oh. for the Auburn Tigers. They were names. Actually, I was, I was playing in those days. I remember those names. Golly, they were, I mean, they were just marvelous. Great players. Time for uh, Ole Miss to do something. That's William from a couple of yards deep. And their field position not much better. As Robert Williams brings the ball out to the 21-yard line. Donnay Young made the tackle for the special teams. Well, let's compare the first start. So Archie, his first uh, career start at Ole Miss, 183 yards and three touchdowns. Peyton Manning was a a true freshman really thrown into the fire at Tennessee. And an inauspicious beginning for Peyton at UT with 81 yards, no touchdowns. And Eli was just fabulous last week against yeah. Murray State. You could add both Peyton and Archie's stats, and they didn't equal the Eli Manning's last week. But it's time for him to just take control of this offense, get some life back in him, throw the ball with a little bit. There's one. That's an excellent throw to yeah. Jamie Armstrong. And a first down, only their second first down of the ball game. And Dave, what you've got to do is you've got to take pressure off your defense. And this helps your defense. Come out here, a little play action right there. Now square up, throw a quick pass in the seam right there. A lot of lot of room. And this is the big guy. Metcalf, look at this. Boy, just keep on forcing out. Kyle, you're trying to use that speed around there. Metcalf doing a great job with those hands. A preseason All-American out of Clarksdale, Mississippi. Well, that's a dangerous throw. Travaris Robinson almost uh, picked it off. Jamie Armstrong made the catch and tucked it away quickly. Well, that's the difference between good quarterbacks and great quarterbacks. Great quarterbacks complete those plays. They throw it in there. They've got ice water on their, in their veins. If they throw an interception, they just kind of wipe it off. 
but it's time for Ole Miss to kind of get something going. They've got to take some of the life out of here and give their, their team, especially their defense, a little bit of a lift. Eli Manning trying to get the Rebels on the move late in the second quarter. And his throw is incomplete. Omar Rayford has not caught one so far today. A big part of their offense last week, a junior college transfer, caught four passes and a touchdown last week. But Manning could not connect. Don't forget to stay tuned. Coming up at the half, we'll be highlighting the best in the SEC, presented by Don Pablos. Warren Pepper taking you through our halftime here from Auburn, Alabama. Now listen to these fans. You'll know if he makes it or not. Trying to call an audible. Three-man front. Now Collier stepping up in there as Manning throws. Incomplete. Intended for Ross Barkley. And it's through his hands. And Ole Miss will have to punt the football again. Well, the pass is there. Manning under no pressure. He drops back, looks, and when he fires the ball, this is the difference between coming coming down with a first down and having to give the ball up. You've got to come down with those catches. If it hits you in the hands, you've got to feel that you own it. Manning, look at him, a little bit upset right there. Ridgeway, his fourth punt of the afternoon. This one a little bit better. And Watkins uh, makes the catch at the 24-yard line. He's got those feet moving, but... Uh, not very far. He's dropped quickly at the 21 by Matt Greer. Our game next week here on J.P. Sports. The Ole Miss Rebels once again. You'll see Eli Manning once again direct this Rebel offense against a tough Vanderbilt team that played a great ball game earlier today. The first half of our doubleheader. Coming up just short against the Alabama Crimson Tide. Alabama won that game 12-9, but Vandy will be back. You can guarantee that. A tough, uh, hard-nosed football team against the Ole Miss Rebels. Oh boy, Brown spinning across the 35 to the 38-yard line. Ronnie Brown out of Cartersville, Georgia. And I tell you, this guy is a good-looking young running back for the Auburn Tigers. And Dave, that's designed to go weak side, outside. And right now, Auburn's in their hurry-up offense. They're not allowing Ole Miss to change players. Players are a little bit tired. Auburn's out there saying, hey, we're not going to let you change players. We're just going to run it at you. Brown again, Russell down after a gain of a yard to the 41-yard line. Josh Cooper is there to make the tackle. Now they huddle up. Second half, the 41. Uh, even those uh, those Auburn players got to take a breath yeah. every now and then. It yeah. is hot down there. Well, interesting, they're letting the clock run. I mean, I don't understand that. If you're going to try to get in the scoring position, you just don't let it run. Don't forget, at uh, halftime, we'll also be taking a look at the all Altel halftime stat. That's coming up at the half. Auburn and Ole Miss, a shutout ball game for the Auburn defense. Wow, 25 seconds to get that playoff. Going to have no timeouts left. Here's the big problem as uh, Justin uh, Fetzko makes the catch and uh, picks up several yards for the clock. Still running, 20 seconds to go in the first half. Yeah, and I think Jason Campbell looked over at the sideline of Tommy Tuberville and just said, hey, let's just uh, let the clock run out. But look at the number of plays, 41 to 19. And you know what? This game is uh, still, I mean, it's 13 nothing. We're talking about a close ball game, break here or there, and Ole Miss could get back in it. You talk about totally dominated with the uh, number of plays and yards in the first half. And that'll do it for the first half of football from Auburn, Alabama. This partisan crowd at Jordan-Hare Stadium witnessing a dominating performance by the Auburn defense in the first half, shutting down the Ole Miss Rebels. And Auburn leads Ole Miss 13 to nothing at the end of the first half. Let's go to the field with Warren Pepper. Coach Tommy Tuberville here, 40-some offensive plays to their 19, Tommy, and you're up 13. Well, that's how you play defense. We're not playing very, very well offensively running the football until the last part of the second yes. quarter, but... Uh, I think we'll get stronger defensively. We're playing a lot of players, and that's going to help all the way through the game. But uh, I'm proud of our guys. We're playing hard, and we just need to make more plays on offense. You indicated you thought you'd be able to run right at them. Do you think more of that will surface in the second half? Well, the way they're moving their defense around it, you know, you can't play good run technique, and so we're just running the ball right at them now. And probably the second half, we'll probably do a little bit more of that, you know, just trying to wear them down. Their defense has been out there a long time. 
Very well. Tommy Tuberville heads to halftime, up 13-0. We will continue with a halftime highlight show coming up in just a moment. We leave you and be back momentarily. Auburn up 13-0. SEC football is brought to you by the thousands of drink combinations at Sonic, America's drive-in. By the Cat Rental Store, where you can rent a whole lot more. By your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, get the feeling. By Fast Signs. For sign and graphic solutions made simple, call 1-800-FAST-SIGNS. And by Don Pablo, the real enchilada. When everyone else is heading south for the winter, it's still summer at Sonic. This month at Sonic, it's Pink Flamingo Month, where you can keep summer alive with Sonic's refreshing new Pink Flamingo drink with real lemons and fresh strawberries, or create your favorite flavors from thousands of cool combinations. This month, any large drink is only 99 cents. So hurry in for a last taste of summer. And for more great Sonic flavor, try our bacon cheddar burger toaster sandwich. Man, what is this? Like group double C? At least the beer vendor comes up here, huh? Yeah. Have you got any oxygen? <laughs> yeah, what were they, uh, sold out of seats on the roof, genius? <laughs> yeah, really did. This is really cool, though, guys. I've never seen a game from orbit before. <laughs> well, nice pass. Nice pass. Hey, watch your heads, guys. Here comes a blimp. <laughs> the blimp. <laughs> How's the beer taste? Good. Good. Handling fee. Ice House style. We make the smooth, never watered down taste of Ice House for guys like you. There you go. is beauty if it's only skin deep. The new Camry, reinvented so it's sleeker, faster, roomier, better. You're gonna want one. See your local Toyota dealer. Advance Auto Parts presents the best play of the week in the SEC. Last Saturday in Columbia, there was a special team moment for South Carolina. It is blocked. And look out. This is being returned by Rashad Bayshot. Bayshot trying to be run down. He's going to score. Rashad Faison ran a blocked Boise State field goal attempt back 87 yards for a touchdown, giving the Gamecocks a 12-point halftime lead. That's our Advance Auto Parts best play of the week. And welcome back. We're at Jordan Hare Stadium, Ole Miss Trails, Auburn. 13 nothing here at Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Hi, everybody. Warren Pepper for a little look at some things that have happened not only here but around the country today. First, we'll talk about the play at this point that probably has as big a reason as any win to put Auburn in front. It was a fumble recovered by Chris Collins that led to the only touchdown that we had here uh, to this point, there were a couple of field goals, but then there was a late, kind of in the last couple of minutes of the second quarter, a late touchdown by Auburn that puts them up 13-0 here at halftime in this game this afternoon against Ole Miss. You know, this is kind of the 10th anniversary year of Jefferson Pilot covering all the different things that have happened in Southeastern Conference football. Let's take a look back at something that happened at this very field in 1994. Gridiron Gems of the SEC is brought to you by Sonic, America's drive-in. In the 1994 Auburn LSU faceoff, the Tigers proved you can win with D. The War Eagles scored four touchdowns with their defense, three in the final 12 minutes of the game. He'll drop with time, lots of time, but he throws it into traffic. Intercepted by Ken Elvis. And he's inside the five. He will score. A fake draw. 
Howard up the middle. Intercepted again! Brad Smith! And he will score! Howard with time. Into traffic! Auburn's defense forced eight LSU turnovers that led the Tigers to a 30-26 win. And that's a look at this week's Sonics Gridiron Gem. A lot of folks that were here remember that game. Remember LSU had the big lead and chose not to sit on it and kept trying to get more and more. And by throwing it, it opened up opportunities for the Auburn defense. A little bit of there of the Sonic Gems there of the Gridiron from 10 years ago. Uh, and here is the halftime score as Auburn leads Ole Miss. And we will take a break here from Auburn as we show you the touchdown. The only one in the first half is Cassinius Moore gets into the end zone. We'll be back in just a bit. Turtle Wax. Grizzly Grill Guards. Rancho Shocks. Gas cans. Advance Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. We need some help. We need a lot of help. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. This is an SEC athlete. He practices even in his sleep. She will always rise to the challenge. This is an SEC athlete. She's her hardest critic. He has the strength to win under pressure. He is the excellence that wins championships. For their blood, sweat, and tears, we salute them and replenish them. The SEC and Gatorade, partners committed to athletic excellence. Did you know that when you buy Golden Flake snacks, you are supporting your favorite SEC team long after the game is over? Through our corporate partnership with the Southeastern Conference, Golden Flake supports not only the championship athletic events, but also the SEC youth clinics and academic programs. Each member school directly benefits from the corporate partner sponsorships. Golden Flake and the SEC, teaming up for excellence. I'm Brian Bythe, owner of Bythe Motors, Nelson City, Alabama. Did you know that every new car dealer pays exactly the same price for each and every new vehicle? Big C dealers have absolutely no price advantage over small town dealers. In fact, it's just the opposite. The difference in the selling price from one dealer to another is the cost of doing business, their overhead. Here at Bice, our overhead is low, which means we can sell every new vehicle for the guaranteed lowest price, or we'll pay the difference in price twice. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents the SEC Good Works Team, recognizing superior community service efforts by league football players. Today's honoree is senior defensive end James Collier from Auburn University. James is a frequent speaker and spokesman for 10 churches in the Auburn area. He also gives motivational talks about setting goals to students at elementary and high schools in Alabama at his hometown of Miami, Florida. Jefferson Pilot Sports is proud to salute James Collier from being named a member of the SEC Good Works Team. SECsports.com is your online destination for up-to-the-minute information on the Southeastern Conference. This interactive site featuring stats, features, and exclusive SEC championship coverage throughout the year. Fans can also shop at the SEC Superstore or listen to weekly coaches' media briefings. Don't miss all the action at SECsports.com. Our score here in Auburn is the Tigers leading the Rebels 13-0 here at halftime. Well, there has been already a game played this afternoon in the Southeastern Conference. It was part of our SEC Jefferson Pilot doubleheader, and it was a field goal kicking extravaganza. In Nashville, Vandy trying to pull an upset against the Bama Tide, and Chuck Polino with field goals to put them up early. But Lane Bearden would knock the ones through that he had to, and it's a 12-9 Bama lead inside a minute and a half. A 37-yard field goal is missed by Foligno, and that preserves the victory for Alabama. That score again today in Nashville, 12-9. Other scores, Kentucky bouncing back from its loss to Louisville last week, picks up a 28-20 victory over Ball State. Elsewhere around the country, number one ranked Miami is delayed at this moment because of weather problems down in South Florida. 
Texas now up 44-14. We're showing that as the final huge victory there. Virginia Tech, 31-0 over Western Michigan. That's the final. And the other score includes Fresno State over Wisconsin as the number 19th ranked Fresno State shows that they are certainly for real with Ohio State picking up a victory, that final there over Akron. And then UCLA over Kansas, followed by Ohio State over Akron and then UCLA beating Kansas 41-17. Now next week, we want to remind you that Vandy will go to Oxford, Mississippi, and Ole Miss will see what happens there in their home contest there next Saturday afternoon. That'll be Jefferson Island, Jefferson Pilots Sports game next Saturday afternoon. We will take a local break with Auburn leading Ole Miss 13-0 back in just a moment. What makes these air conditioners so reliable? Rely on Rood. It's Rood's 100-year tradition of reliability. And it's the super durable scroll compressor built into every Rood reliable air conditioner, ensuring years of quiet, ultra-efficient operation. There's a Rood reliable air conditioner for every need. For a limited time, free 10-year parts and labor warranty on premium equipment. Call for the Rood reliable dealer near you. If you're sitting in it, you're not looking at it. If you're looking at it, you're not sitting in it. Oh, the agony. Kaiser Fine Furnishings, Wetumpka Highway, Montgomery. Alpha Insurance asks, what do you want to be when you grow up? A physical therapist. Alpha knows how important it is for our children to be able to pursue their dreams. A writer. A life insurance policy from Alpha can help make it possible. A kindergarten teacher. By providing the protection and financial security. An artist. Your family needs. A veterinarian. Our Alpha family would like to remind you to protect your family with life insurance and... Call Alpha! It only happens once a year, and it can save you thousands. It's Larry Puckett Chevrolet's model closeout sale. New Tahoes and Suburbans save up to $5,000. New extended cab pickups, two- and four-wheel drive, save up to $4,080. Every 2001 Chevrolet car, truck, and van on Larry Puckett's lot marked down to the lowest prices of the year. Larry Puckett Chevrolet on Cobbs Ford Road in Prattville. For a complete listing of our used vehicle inventory, log on to www.larrypuckett.com. Don Pablo's best of the SEC, the best of the SEC brought to you by Don Pablo's, the real enchilada. Let's look at the different statistical leaders around the conference. Rex Grossman of Florida with a 375 yard per game average. And when we go to other statistical leaders in terms of uh, rushing, Vicenzo Miller from Mississippi State is a young man that continues to lead the way around the conference in the early season. We'll see if Musa Smith can have any luck against South Carolina's Gamecocks in a game scheduled tonight in Athens. And then the rushing leaders followed by the receivers. MJ Garrett, Bandy coming into today at 219. Josh Reed of LSU not far behind. That's a look at Don Pablo's best of the SEC. And our score, Auburn 13, Ole Miss nothing as Auburn opportunistic on a couple of Ole Miss miscues, and they find themselves up 13-0, and they've quite frankly, guys, dominated the play much more than that, but David Cutcliffe's team still only 13 down. Uh, I know you guys tucked away one or two bottles of cold, cold water for me up there <laughs> during halftime, did you not? <laughs> i got to tell you, Warren, that I, I have a lot of respect for you down there with a coat and tie on. We, oh, no. saw, we saw Dave Baker on the first game uh, at Vanderbilt. I think he wore his under yeah, undershirt he out there, his didn't he? His undershirt, that's well, unbelievable. So Warren's looking good, but uh, well, you're right. The Auburn Tigers have dominated this game on the line of scrimmage. Well, you can dominate on the offensive line and on the defensive line, Dave, as you know. Good yeah. things usually happen. Oh, yeah, but Ole Miss has got to be happy. They're only down 13 zip. Sure. I think that two-point play could really loom big in the second half if Ole Miss can get their offense cranked up and going. Well, last week, the Auburn defense did not allow Ball State to cross the midfield stripe, and today Ole Miss has not crossed the midfield stripe either. Well, this is one of the one of the highlights for Ole Miss in the first half. That's that interception by Seneca Taylor, which stopped the drive, but this one was bad. 
They fumbled the ball deep, gave Auburn great field position. Auburn, big time hit. That led to the field goal. And as you say, Duval is almost automatic. And then late in the game, they're wearing them down. 40-some plays to only 19. And in goes Cassinius Moore, and that made it 13 to zip. So a couple of Duval field goals, a touchdown run by Moore. And let's take a look at our all-tell halftime stats. A dominating wow. performance by the Auburn Tigers. Look at that time of possession. They've had it, what, nine and a half minutes more than Ole Miss. But the big stat, the scoreboard, 13 zip. Yeah, that's the only one that counts, although Auburn uh, penalized five times. They would certainly like to cut down on that in the second half because they shot themselves in the foot on several occasions with penalties could have a larger lead yeah. than they do right now at 13 nothing yeah I will miss is still in this football game sure. but they're gonna have to throw the ball in the second half to get back in it they've been unable to really move it with any consistency running the football so they're gonna have to go to the arm of Eli Manning well Eli Manning pretty much shut down he did uh, complete some passes in the first half but really did not throw the ball downfield do you think he's got to throw it downfield more Absolutely. in the second half? let's when take a look at Rose rewinds David well tell, tell us what you think well I think first of all you got to score any way that you can score when you, uh, when you get in a football game like this, you've got to score anyway. Fumble, return, interception anyway. And then you've got to throw the ball downfield. You've got to keep them honest. And that's what Eli Manning did so well last week. For Auburn, hey, it's an easy one. They're wearing them down. Keep wearing them down. And if Manning drops back the pressure, that's when you want to, you know, that drops back the pass. That's when you got to put pressure on him. All right, so Ole Miss with their work cut out for them in the second half, trailing the Auburn Tigers 13 to nothing at Jordan-Hare Stadium. We'll be back with the second half in just a moment. Pizza Hut has got a pizza custom made for everyone on the planet Earth. The big New Yorker, 16 inches of foldable New York-style pizza, stuffed crust pizza, a ring of cheese deliciously hidden in a tasty crust, pan pizza, soft and chewy on the inside, crunchy golden brown on the outside. Exclusively only from the professional pizza on the brain, 24-7 obsessive, we care about pizza so much it's frightening, pizza maniacs at Pizza Hut. A variety so vast it is irrefutable, mouth-watering, delicious proof that together they are without the slightest doubt the best pizzas under one roof. Wow, I gotta go, I'm starving. New batteries. Liquid wrench. Autocraft battery cables. AC Delco alternators. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. You know we can give you a free installation if you like. Sure. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Imagination is the foundation upon which an education is built. But there are some things most students could never imagine, like living without running water or checking for snake tracks. At Auburn's Rural Studio, architectural students are designing homes for those who need them, learning that having talent and an education doesn't place you above the rest of the world. It makes you responsible for it. You may not make it to the big time, but you can make it to the big game with Altel. Just enter for a chance to win Altel's ultimate football fantasy sweepstakes. You and three lucky friends could get VIP tickets and treatment at one of this season's biggest games. So make a play for the nearest Altel store today. We'll get you in on all the action. SEC football is being brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. By Chevy, the cars millions of people depend on every day. We'll be there. By Alltel. Alltel Total Freedom Plans give you nationwide calling with no roaming or long distance charges. By Pizza Hut. So much variety. The best pizzas under one roof. By BMW. Visit your local BMW center for a test drive. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And by Ice House. You've got a style all your own. Ice House style. Enjoy. Welcome back to Auburn, Alabama. The War Eagle celebrating a 13 to nothing halftime lead. And a moment ago, Warren Pepper talked with Auburn coach uh, David Cutcliffe. Coach, feel just happy to be only 13 down? Well, we're fortunate. Uh, you can't let a good football team like Auburn play on a short field all day long between the turnovers and 
some problems in the punting game. Uh, we've certainly done that. We put our defense in a bind, and they've, they've responded pretty yes. well, to be honest with you, keeping them out of the end zone. The defense was on the field so much. Was there any particular concern for that side of the ball at halftime? Well, no question. I even took a timeout one time, uh, just try to let us catch our breath. But, uh, fortunately, we get the ball first. I told our offense, well, first of all, our kickoff return. If we get to return it, we need to establish some field position. Offensively, we need to go out and put a drive together a little bit at a time. We're not going to do it all at one time, but we can get right back in the heart of this football game. We start developing some rhythm on offense, keep playing hard on defense. We can't afford another turnover, though. Thank you, Coach. Coach David Cutcliffe's team down 13 nothing. We'll throw it back upstairs. All right, Warren, the Rebels' David Cutcliffe uh, obviously frustrated with yeah. uh, oh. the first half oh, of this game. He has to be. I mean, you look at the stats, 6 of 10 for 39 yards, and then you stop. When he talked about playing on a short field, think of this, Dave. Auburn has started on their own average, on their own 48-yard line. Old Miss on their own 17. If I'm Eli Manning, I think you've got to throw the football. You've got to loosen them up. You're either going to live or die with the pass. It's time to throw the football. You've got a running game a little bit started, but they're going to win off the arm of Eli Manning. Play action, and Manning is hit. Spencer Johnson knocked the ball free, and let's see who's got it. All right, if Auburn comes up with this one, this is a huge turnover. Now, all the Auburn players are all saying going that way. Still fighting down deep for it. And they got it. Oh, what a play. Oh. It was Spencer Johnson that came crashing through and hit Eli Manning. And Mark Brown has recovered the fumble for the Auburn Tigers. Well, exactly what David Cutcliffe said they couldn't have happen, happened. Watch this. His arm's going to come forward, but you see he's just slung around. That's just slinging around. His arm had not started forward with the pass. Boy, has Auburn been opportunistic. Look at this. Again, that ball's out there. You got to get it. They got a chance. A lot of blue shirts there. Another dominating performance by the Auburn defense as Ronnie Brown shakes free from a tackler in the backfield. And then shows a little power, lowering that left shoulder to the 10-yard line. There is a flag drop. A flag on the play late. Now, is it the face mask? And it's thrown right where the tackle is made. That's the first thing you think of. I know the coaches stand on the sideline. Yeah, Tommy Tuberville saying, that better not go against us. If you're David Cutcliffe over there, whoop, it is. You think face mask, but boy, a whole look at Tommy Tuberville. You can tell. Look at that stance. Oh, man. Penalties have been a problem for Tuberville's Tigers today. And uh, turnovers have been a bugaboo for the Ole Miss Rebels. Three turnovers for Ole Miss, only one for Auburn. Boy. Ole Miss only allowed, what, seven sacks last season? A remarkable record. And there's but, one uh, right there. But that Auburn defense has improved uh, from all appearances over last year, and they were one of the top defenses in the SEC a season ago. Brown on the draw. Brings it back to the 15-yard line. L.P. Spence out of Corinth, Mississippi, number 49, there to make the tackle. And, you know, I really like the way Jason Campbell operates in the backfield. Just at that time, he drops back, same motion, and then just gracefully, just casually hands it off on a draw play. So he gives his lineman, takes enough time to let his lineman get the little turn, and then he just hands the football off. And then you got a back like Ronnie Brown back there and those two big tight ends up front. And you just tell him, find a little seam, just get open, just find a little spot. There's one back to the right. Big hole. Brown. It's a foot race to the corner. And Brown goes down at the two-yard line. Justin Coleman saved the touchdown for the Rebel defense. Boy, and he did. Good effort there, but great vision in the hole. Watch this. It's going to go this way and then all the way back. Look at the cutback. Now, get to the outside. Pick up a little block there. Now, if you're a defender, you got to come up. you got to get him to the outside. You're the last guy. And, boy, good blocks downfield. Watch this block. Right here is one. Bang, right in there. See, you drive him inside. And then you let them get to the outside. That's great. You just take them in there. A lot of times you just block by just taking them to an area. More somersaults in for the touchdown. Tommy Tuberville says we're going for one. Interesting. I would have thought he would have gone for two. Touchdown number two of the afternoon. Well, this is just big man on big man up front. Good line surge. And you give it to Ronnie Brown and just say, try to find a little seam. That was more. I'm sorry. I said Ronnie Brown. 
That's 23, but that was more, 22. Duvall adds the extra point. Two touchdowns this afternoon for the sophomore from Aniston. Well, he had some uh, pretty serious ankle injuries a couple of years ago, but he's come back strong and a pair of touchdowns by Moore giving Auburn now a 20 to nothing lead over the Ole Miss Rebels. Look at all the extra stuff I get for this little guy. I don't even treat myself this well. At least my bank takes care of me. South Trust, with her banker's dozen checking account. 13 extras all in one account, like one flat monthly fee, no matter how many checks I write. No minimum balance, a free South Trust check card, 13 great features. Now that's something to bark about. <laughs> Keep your business moving in the right direction. You need to make the best decisions about your image. Fast Signs offers sign and graphic solutions to make your choices simple. With locations coast to coast, Fast Signs is ready to keep your business moving. Fast Signs, sign and graphic solutions made simple. Call, click, or visit a Fast Signs location near you. That's right. You take the return. Ah, 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 my man G, my man Miles. That's all you brought? <laughs> green chair. So I had the green chair yeah, last time. You brought time. that sorry dip last time. Oh, see, that's cold. That's, that's game started? <laughs> hey, sweet thing. No beer, no nothing? I forgot. No entry. Oh, like your grandmother? Pay-per-view. Ice House style. We make the smooth, never watered down taste of Ice House for guys like you. Oh, you just locked the recliner, to be dog. Looking for a real power trip? Chevy's moving to 2001 metal. 1500 cash back or 29 APR on Chevy Suburban. 1500 cash back or 29 APR on Tahoe. That's right, tough guy. Big cash back or low APR financing. We'll give you the power. The question is, are you gonna use it? Make your money count now at your Chevy dealer. The Auburn Tigers lead the Ole Miss Rebels 20 to nothing early in the third quarter. Auburn capitalizing on a Ole Miss fumble. Cassinius Moore, two touchdown runs today. He and Ronnie Brown have done a good job from that tailback position. And Duval has uh, rarely allowed Ole Miss to return a kick, but this one is short enough for Robert Williams to bring out from the two. Well, the Rebel field position has been atrocious today. And again, they'll start around the 20-yard line. Well, now you know what you do on offense. You just take a deep breath and say, hey, look, you're down three touchdowns. You're going to get back in this football game. There's a lot of time, 13-18, left in this third quarter. You're going to have to throw the ball. There's a young guy that thinks he can throw it. He's uh, got a lot of credentials, a lot of background. Now you just take a deep breath and say, hey, let's see what we can do. But you got 86,000 people here that are going to stand up and scream. Eli Manning's first taste of uh, Southeastern Conference football on the road. As the starter for the Ole Miss Rebels. Trying to get Gunn going. And he's been mostly firing blanks today thanks to that Auburn defense as Mark Brown runs him out of bounds after a gain of about a yard. Well, we talked about Eli Manning last week throwing the 18 passes Dave in a row. And that's not against an Auburn defense. This is a very quick Auburn defense. And then talking with the Auburn coaches, they said, if he completes 18 against us, he'll be all SEC. Hand him the Heisman right yeah, there. Exactly. But it didn't happen, and uh, he has struggled today against this uh, ferocious Auburn defensive team. Well, the game quickens up as you start playing those SEC teams because they're very fast. Short drop, quick toss, Armstrong has a first down for the Rebels out across the 30. Run out of bounds at around the 33-yard line. That's a good heads-up play. Good quick out. You give a little bit of cushion, let them get first down. You start moving those chains. And again, that's the way all of a sudden you look up and you're in four-down territory, and you can go for it. It's been a long time since uh, Ole Miss has crossed the midfield. I don't think they've crossed, have they? Not today. Not today. And Ball State did not uh, hear against wow. Auburn last week. Well, that's a pretty big stat to build on. Auburn saying, hey, wait a minute, we're almost to the 50-yard line. Robert Williams. Running behind the right side of his line, but the Auburn Tigers. Boy, are they good on that defensive front line. 
Well, there's two players that come to mind when you start talking about Ole Miss and, and throwing the football. Chris Collins is one of their go-to guy. And Freifogel. I mean, he's a wide out. He's just a freshman, but he's got great speed, really committed to the game. And neither one of them has a reception no, today. They haven't, they haven't found him. Got to find them soon. Collins is lined up in the slot to the left side. You got Rayford, number four, out here wide, so maybe they will go to him. Go to one of their wide outs, get a long one. Here comes pressure. The blitz is on, and Manning standing in the pocket, throwing it. Oh, almost a great catch by Armstrong as he leans out forward but uh, could not bring it in. Tavares Robinson was there in coverage. Boy, and that's the one that's that's the difference between winning and losing a lot of times, that one inch. Good pickup by the offensive line. Good, good time to step up. And again, just right off the, just right off the fingertips. This is a well-thrown football. You can see it's right there. Oh, you got to catch that one. I'm... I'm, you know, I'm a defensive player, but a ball like that, if it hits you that good, you've got to catch it. Listen to this Auburn crowd. Third down, they don't want him past the 50. Omar Rayford. He's got to get the 44, and he comes nowhere near it as Mark Brown delivers a jarring blow. Whoa. Boy, I'm telling you one thing. The boys are running out there today. Mark Brown, number 52's middle linebacker. The minute he reads the quarterback's eyes, he's going to dash through the football. Now, if you're a corner, you force him back inside. There comes Brown. Boom. And look at Eli Manning. Oh, boy. Got to get the first down yardage. You think that defense isn't happy? That's something that you build on. They've gone six quarters of football, and no one's gotten past midfield. Wow. That's, that's tremendous. And Ole Miss only three first downs in the game. Freshman punter, Ridgeway. Watkins uh, moving up, will let it hit at the 31-yard line. He gets an Ole Miss bounce back across the 25, and the Rebels down it at the 24. Auburn Tigers 20. Shutting out the Ole Miss Rebels, it's 20 to nothing Auburn here at Auburn, Alabama. Back after this message from Texas Pete. If you think all hot sauces are alike, think again. Some are just too darn hot. And others are too darn bland. Hey, could you pass the Texas Pete? Right here, partner. Hey, thanks. Texas Pete, the South's leading hot sauce, is perfect to lasso the flavor of all your favorite dishes. See you around. Texas Pete, it's the bottle with a cowboy. BMW 5 Series. Test drive the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW center. The Southeastern Conference, a tradition of excellence. Celebrating 10 years of the conference championship game. You may not make it to the big time, but you can make it to the big game with Altel. Just enter for a chance to win Altel's ultimate football fantasy sweepstakes. You and three lucky friends could get VIP tickets and treatment at one of this season's biggest games. So make a play for the nearest Altel store today. We'll get you in on all the action. Auburn shutting out Ole Miss in the third quarter, 20 to nothing. David Steele, Dave Rowe, Warren Pepper with you on a hot Saturday afternoon in September at Auburn, Alabama. But you know, it's not bad hot. I mean, it's breezy hot. It's not bad hot for football players. What do you expect in September? <laughs> About mid-80s and uh, quite a bit of humidity. Ronnie Brown carries it to the 30. A six-yard gain on first down, and Auburn continues to attempt to wear down the Ole Miss defense. 
attempt. They are wearing them down. That defense has been out there a long time. You may see an offensive cramp here. That's Ronnie Brown. He may have to come out. Anytime they come out and get you, you've got to go off. Well, at uh, various times today, both Ronnie Brown and Cassinius Moore have had uh, some problems perhaps cramping up in this uh, September heat. So the youngster from Cartersville, Georgia, who committed originally to the University of Tennessee and then uh, wound up at Auburn, having a big game today, but now on the sideline. And a handoff to Chris Butler, getting his first carry of the afternoon. And it looks like he picks up just a yard. So it'll be third down for the Auburn Tiger offense. Let's go to the sideline again, Warren. Yeah, it's one thing if you're a fan sitting up there in the stands and the home <laughs> side right now is uh, in the shade, which is, I guess, some consolation. But this is the fan you need to be on the other side of. I'm talking the polar cool one where the big guys come in here and get as much water as they can. Some of them put the towels on top of their heads. Anything they can to do. If I could get a little room on the end of this bench, I think I'd find <laughs> myself a space to watch the rest of this. <laughs> that means you got to move DeMarco McNeil out of the way, which ain't going to happen. Tim Carter. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line. He does have great speed, doesn't he? Uh, I, they do, and I'll tell you, you got to credit Jason Campbell on that one. He read that inside blitz. He saw that middle backer and dumped it right where the area was. Watch the middle backer come up the middle. See the pressure start to come up there, and then he just jumps it off. You see right there the flash, right back over where he was. Then it's just get to the outside. It's a foot race. Good read by Jason Campbell. Again, well, when you got speed, you can get to that outside quick. Man, Carter's got that speed, doesn't he? And so does Green. Oh, Quick fumble. toss, he fumbled, and Ole Miss has it. At the 47-yard line, the Rebels recovered. Turnover number two for the Auburn Tigers today. And Gothy's going to give them the best field position they've had all day, and that's on the other side of the Auburn 50-yard line. So they've got an opportunity to get back in this football game. Good hit on that play. Strong hit. It's just a quick out. Now what you want to do is you got to run hard to the play. Good hit right there. Boy, that was a good stick right there. I think that was Spence, number 48. See if 48 doesn't come in there. Yeah, it was 48. LP Spence. Finally, a little breathing room for the Ole Miss offense and quarterback Eli Manning after the fumble recovery. And if you're going to take advantage of anything, you've got to take advantage of it here. A lot of time. With protection, he stands calmly in the pocket and delivers the ball to the fullback, Charles Stackhouse. Good for about a seven-yard gain to the 39-yard line of the Auburn Tigers. Boy, and Auburn has taken away the wideouts. I mean, you talk about a guy, Chris Collins, he had six catches. Freifogel, he's got speed downfield. He threw, as you said, what, to 11 different receivers last week? He hasn't found the wideout that I've seen all day long. Maybe a little short, a little drag across the middle or something, but he has not been able to find them deep. He's got Armstrong split to the left. Armstead in the slot to the right. And Rayford split wide to the right on second down and two. But the give is to the fullback Stackhouse. And Ole Miss has its fourth first down of the afternoon to the Auburn 35-yard line. Ontario Thomas made the tackle. This Auburn defense just keeping the pressure on young Eli Manning all day. Yeah, no place to step up. He's got somebody in space. Every time he throws the football, he's under pressure. You want to see what it's like to play? Here they come. They're falling at your feet. They're knocking you down. Every time you want to step up, you got to just almost eat the football because they're coming roaring at you. And later in the game, it gets the more of those defensive linemen get that weight forward and come after you. Manning hit as he throws, and the ball, the ball falls incomplete. Boy, that was max protection there. He kept his backs in. And you talk about drives. Look at this. This is on nine possessions. He's only averaged 2.7 plays. That means he's fumbled. He's had a fumble. You know, the ball's been dropped. Uh, he just he hasn't even averaged three plays a play. I mean, a series. 12 yards. Look how short they are. You've got your defense. They get over there. They barely get over and get a drink of water, and they're right back out there in a minute 18 uh, average drive. That's on nine possessions. That's a good oh. fake by Manning. He has everybody fooled and throws deep for Rayford. Open. Oh, did he step Incomplete. out of bounds? Incomplete. No, he stepped out of bounds, Dave. He caught it. You're right. It is incomplete. But he, oh, he stepped out of bounds. And he had a lot of room to get oh, those feet set. Mercy. He couldn't do it. 
Oh, mercy, mercy. You got to stay in bounds. And you know what? The official in great position to make that call. He's running right down the line. And look, watch his feet. He's up. He catches. Oh, you know what? Woo, that toe was down. Wait a minute now. Boy, our cameraman, great pictures from the camera. Watch his toe. It is a terrific angle on the other replay yeah. that we had, and it looks like he does see, have toe, the catch. Toe well, heel. All right. Well, Tough now, call. Now, does it count if it's a toe, or does it count if does the heel have know. to count? Yeah, the <laughs> official said the heel count. So well, that's the what official, we'll go with. Yeah, the official was in great position to make that call. Here comes a blitz. Uh-oh. Picked off. Auburn's got it. Simmons to the 41-yard line, and Manning throws the interception under pressure again. Yeah, he threw it. Look at Archie and Olivia sitting there. They know it, too. He just got under pressure. Auburn came with a full blitz on him. They squashed him down. DeMarco McNeil right in his face, number 92. And you can see right away David Cutcliffe comes over there and starts talking, okay, look, what'd you do wrong? Shake it off. Go back over there. But what he did wrong, look, he has DeMarco McNeil right in his face. And he just kind of short arms it. He throws it in trouble. Can't do that. And you go back to that last play that it looked like Rayford oh. had an easy six. Oh, yeah. And now Auburn's got the ball back after Ole Miss's fourth turnover of the game. You know, last week, Ole Miss fumbled six times and recovered five of them. They, yeah. they were determined to cut down on their mistakes today. But now four turnovers for the Ole Miss Rebels in this game. Well, this is all part of the learning experience for an Eli Manning. He's out there. He's, he's learning how to play this football game. And he's going to know. He'll go back. He'll look at that film. He's a great student of film. And he'll say, oops, you know what I did? I would have had a, it would have been a lot safer just to bring that football down. But third down, you've got to realize that they're going to come after you. This Auburn defense, remember how good they were last year? They're better. <laughs> yeah, I think. And uh, I really do believe this is a better defensive team. And the one that was third in the SEC a year ago, Cassinius Moore. Oh, I saw, I saw another fumble. A little bit late, though. Mark the spot. Kenny Jackson uh, is on the bottom of the pile trying to strip that ball free along with Lanier Gothie. And it'll be Auburn's football. A third down play coming up. Tigers dominating uh, this ball game 20 to nothing. Ole Miss has just for the first time today crossed the midfield line after an Auburn turnover. Now, if you're Jason Campbell, you, your coaches have told you, don't make a mistake. Don't throw the football into trouble. They don't want to give him the Ole Miss any kind of life. It's third down. If it's not there, just take the ball and scramble run, but don't throw it into trouble. The protection again for the freshman. They're going to tuck it under and run with it, pick up the first down, and a lot more for Campbell. Bounced out of bounds at the 36-yard line by Eric Oliver. This young man from uh, Taylorsville, Mississippi, can really run with the football. He can throw it. A tremendous athlete, great basketball player. Could be playing uh, for the Auburn basketball team as well. But look at the feet. The feet start bouncing. All of a sudden, he sees the seam. He's got it. This is a heck of a collision. Watch Eric Oliver come up here. Just kind of boom. I don't know who won that one. And good block by Joe Walkins here. Look at this. Just what you do is just drive him off, get in front of him. That's a heck of a block by a wide receiver. Turns him all the way around. And that's a smart play. See, that's where you get into trouble when you start to force it, want to force it into, uh, into coverage. Uh-oh, Moore breaking free. Cassinius Moore, his third touchdown of the afternoon. Auburn keeps coming at him, wearing him down and wearing him down, and, yeah. and Moore pops that one free. Well, let me tell you, that was a fantastic cut right there. Look at that. Just allow your blockers to make their block. See that little seam? It's anticipating the hole to the backside and then sprint to the end zone. And he made a marvelous cut. He was going to go outside. The play's designed to go outside. And great running backs, they have that little vision where they just see something. That it's almost like it's developing. And then, bang, they take advantage of it. What a performance by this sophomore from Anniston, Alabama. Three touchdown runs on the afternoon. He's the backup tailback behind Ronnie Brown. 27 to nothing Auburn. Back after a word from your local station. I'm Charles Lee. I spend a lot of time telling coaches and athletes about Jackson Hospital Sports Medicine on Call program. Now I'm telling you, 
If you get hurt at your sport or any type of physical activity, just call us. We'll get you back to your game quick. Remember, for a doctor, a hospital, or a complete rehabilitation, you'll feel better, Jackson. Hello, I'm Tim Nix. My team and I have proudly served Montgomery and Central Alabama for over 30 years. And the only thing that has changed the classic Cadillac over those years are the cars. Hi, I'm Bobby Barnes, and I've been with Classic Cadillac for 25 years. Hi, I'm Larry Hudson. I've been on the Classic Cadillac Pontiac team for 26 years. Hello, my name's Danny Brandon. I've been at Classic Cadillac Pontiac for 32 years. Montgomery's number one team, Classic Cadillac Pontiac. I'd probably pay upwards $4.50 or so. What would you pay for an RB7? $6.95. Would you believe any two subs for just 4 bucks? Nah. <laughs> no, no way. For this much meat in a sub, I would have expected to be a lot more. Honest. Any two for just 4 bucks. For all that you get in this sandwich, that is a great price. Don't put everybody else out of business. <laughs> you can go anywhere and get filled up, but you can only get the two subs for $4 deal at Arby's. When you've got a home improvement job to do, buying your materials should be fast and simple. At Alabama Wholesale Lumber, it is fast and simple. Alabama Wholesale Lumber stocks a full selection of framing and osmose-treated lumber, plywood, roofing materials, doors, and landscape timbers. You won't need a push cart. Just drive in and we'll load you up. You won't wait on a cashier. You'll get personal service in our sales office. And if the order's too large to carry, we'll deliver it. For the quality and service you deserve, come to Alabama Wholesale Lumber. Fleming Road near Norman Bridge, just below the bypass. Well, the jungle rocking today. Cassinius Moore, the sophomore from Anniston, Alabama, has carried for three touchdowns. And the Auburn Tigers pulling away from the Ole Miss Rebels in the third quarter, now leading 27 to nothing. And Philip Yost kicking off for the first time today. He bangs one through the end zone. Let's take another look at the touchdown run by Moore. Well, it's an interesting play. When I talk about development, watch the tight end as he blocks out right here. That's Robert Johnson. Right there is the block, right there. Now, if you're coming this way like this, what you do is you see that develop and you cut back underneath it. You get to the outside. See, right there he reads the tight end's block. They've used that two tight end offense all day. Just a perfect read by Moore on that play. And Eli Manning back to under fire here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. The give is to Joe Gunn, and he has nowhere to run. And that has been the case for most of the afternoon. That's number 82. I believe that was uh, Reggie Torbo. Number 82 on that play. He's playing big. They're getting a lot of players in. This Auburn defense said they could play too deep on their defensive line and linebackers, and they've done it today. They've had a lot of players getting in the football game playing. The deep football team, they're deeper defensively than they were a year ago. Their secondary really has not been challenged too much here today. And that's what Ole Miss had uh, hoped to exploit. Manning throwing it downfield this time. Almost a nice catch, but incomplete wow. near midfield. Jason Armstead, the intended receiver. More about the Tigers and him well covered. I'll tell you one thing. Auburn's had a day about the only thing that went wrong. And watch this play. Dive out right off the fingertips. The defender gets that hand in there. That helps. That's just great coverage one-on-one. -on -one. Not the only thing that went wrong for Auburn today was their team bus on the way to the stadium was involved in an accident. Look at Eli Manning's stats from last week to this week. Of course, in that accident, no one was hurt. It's uh, just a rear-end collision, but that's about the only thing that's gone wrong. Manning throwing. Armstrong could not uh, make the catch. Well, they did give it to him. He said wow. he did stay in bounds. Great catch Boy, by Armstrong was. at the 32-yard line. Well, that's fine in one of your wideouts, number seven. Jamie Armstrong. <laughs> Tiptoeing along the sideline. He got one foot down, right? Boy, there's the toe and heel again, yep. Dave. And that time yeah. they gave it to him. That time they gave it to him. First down, number five for the Ole Miss Rebels. All right, got to move those chains. You got to be thinking about... There's a lot of days ahead right now. Obviously, you've got time to get back in this football game, but, but uh, you're going you're to do it on the arm of Eli Manning. Finding his tight end on that play, Doug Ziegler. 
Boy, don't you like the way David Cutcliffe has brought Eli Manning along? I mean, uh, a lot of coaching, a lot of understanding. He's not a yeller and screamer. He's a teacher as a coach. And that's one thing I, I greatly respect in coaches is someone who's a teacher. I used to have those coaches that yelled and screamed. The louder they yelled, and pretty soon you get tired of it. He takes them out every series, brings them over there, has a word with them, tells them what to look for. Oh, that's a good break. Up the middle, comes towards Sanford. And uh, pops it free for a couple of yards. Perhaps uh, a first down for the Ole Miss Rebels. It looks like it will be at the 43-yard line or very close. This was always a play that bothered me. What it is is it's quick hit. And if you catch it just right, and Sanford does a good job right there, he sees the little tiny seam and makes a good adjustment and breaks through. If they're coming with those backers and you can hit that line and you can split them, you can really do well. You know, one, one player it's really good to see back in there is Ben Claxton, the center. Broke his leg last year. Good to see him back. Freshman All-American in 99. Big number 55 for the Ole Miss Rebels. Once again, hitting the tight end Ziegler, but for a very short game. As uh, Gilliard made the stop, coming up from that whip linebacker position, and it'll be second down and about eight for the Ole Miss Rebels. Oh, you know, we've given a lot of emphasis today also to Eli Manning being, the, you know, just a sophomore, but they've got, Ole Miss has got two guards in there that are both freshmen in Buckles and Johnson, and, uh, boy, they, they're getting a lot, of, uh, a lot of snaps today. They played really well. Of course, Buckles is 6'5", 290. Johnson, 6'6", 320. Wow. One of the Johnson brothers on the right side of that line, the right tackle is Belton Johnson, his older brother. Oh, now it's a lot of time. Rayford's got this one for a big gain. He holds on to the football. Oh. He really got racked wow. by Gilliard, but held on and picks up big yardage for the Ole Miss Rebels. Well, that may give you an indication of what you need if you're Eli Manning. You need time to sit back in there and look downfield, and that's exactly what he gets. Rayford is going to start on the weak side and do a crossing pattern. Again, you're going to see Rayford here coming straight across the field. All right, here he is right here. Down there like that. He's right in the middle. Now, see the seam right here? Three deep defense, three deep. And what he does is he completes it underneath in the seam. That's a good read. And he had time to throw it. Ooh, he doesn't have this time. Collier, uh-oh, Manning flings it out of bounds, and that'll be a grounding. Intentional grounding against the sophomore quarterback, James Collier. They talked about his speed. They moved him from the inside uh, position, a linebacker spot, to the defensive end spot. And just tell him to go get the quarterback. That's what he just did. Boy, uh, they call him Gerber, and that's because he eats his Gerber food. And boy, he certainly does on this play. You've got to throw the football downfield. Watch right here. There he is, right over there. Now watch what he does. Comes inside. Look at this. Just comes clean all the way around the outside. You see the back up there trying to pick him up? That was Stackhouse who thought he had him. Look at him. I love that. He drinks, he eats four or five can jars of Gerber baby food before the game. He prefers the cherry flavor, just for the record, <laughs> for those of you that are keeping Oh, man, you've got some inside stuff. Well, that's a, this is a five, five uh, Gerber fooder. Well, sideline warning yeah. against Gerber. They've already had a tuck your shirt in warning, and now they get the <laughs> sideline warning, so they've gotten a couple of them here today. Well, what they try to do is they try to keep that, that area where it's painted white. You see it right there. The coaches are supposed to stand back. Right from there to there. That's no man's land. You don't go in there. That play lost about 10. Uh, it is second down. And watch Auburn come after them. See if they don't bring some heat. Nope. There's four linemen. Oh, they bring still bring heat. Ziggler came oh. open, however, and the big tight end hauls it in near the first down marker. Boy, and this may be Manning's best pass of the day. I want to tell you, you talk about somebody hitting you, you ought to see Javor Mills, number 96, rolling down your throat. Watch from the left of your screen. Woo! I mean, bang, and he just lays it right out there for his tight end. You can't throw it any better than that. That's a wonderful pass. Third down and one. You hear the crowd? They just don't want him to score. It's the deepest penetration of the Rebels today. The Auburn 21, third down in the yard. This ain't anything fancy. This is just big man on big man. Sanford. And the Ole Miss drive continues. Boy, and Lyman love that. You know, you get down there, you, you're looking up the other guy's nostrils. I mean, it's big man on big man. Just root him out of there. <laughs> 
Let's take a quick glance at the Pizza Hut scoreboard. Some other college football taking place. The number one ranked Hurricanes jumping on top of Rutgers. And a good one, Michigan and Washington. Oregon on top of Utah in the third quarter. Alabama beat Vanderbilt earlier today. Kentucky beat Ball State in the SEC. And in play action. Oh, Armstrong with the ball. He's out of bounds at the three-yard line. What a great throw by Eli Manning. You're absolutely, you, you know, you see flashes of brilliance in this young man, and there's one of them. The pass is thrown. It's, it's an out pattern at the flag, right out by the flag. Now watch. The ball is going to come off before he makes his break. The ball's gone there. Now he's just starting to turn outside, turns around, bang, there's the football. Again, throw the ball. See how he hasn't even turned around yet? Now he's turned around, and the ball is right there. That's just... That's what the old Miss fans hope they see for a lot of years. Power formation for the Rebels. Manning looking to throw it. For the end zone, he overshoots Ziggler. And uh, intentionally, I suspect, Ziggler did not yeah. have and distance that, between his defender. And, Dave, that's a good play. It's a heads-up play. He was going to try to do that little drag out into, the, uh, out into the flat. All of a sudden, he saw it wasn't open. Went back. He was under some pressure by Simmons, number eight. And instead of just throwing the football and trying to force it in, you read it, and then you just make the throw, throw it away. Because you've got three more downs. You've got second, third, and fourth down. No field goal here. Stack House and Williams in the backfield. The give to Robert Williams. He is in for the touchdown. Boy, that was a nice play by Robert Williams. Walker came up, and what he did is he kind of spun inside. Number 37 the outside player. He came up, turned it back inside, and Williams just knew where that end zone was. You'll see number 37, Walker, come up here in the watch. Right in there, right here, bang. And then what you do is just turn, get in that end zone, find that plane. There's Walker. We're going to get a good picture of him. Look at this. I'm going outside. Nope. Now, boom, right inside. And they get on the scoreboard. A nice run by Robert Williams, a junior from Gadsden, Alabama. Extra point by Nichols makes it a 27-7 score. A touchdown run by Williams, his first for the Ole Miss Rebels. And he really had to, to fight his way into the end zone. A nice individual effort for the junior. Well, I know the Auburn fans are saying, golly, you know, uh, they scored. But for Ole Miss, that's a good drive. Gets you back in, gets you some feeling of you know, some pride and things like that. Well, Manning puts them on the scoreboard. First time that Auburn's given up points this year. Well, get the call is back, and this year is your chance to win every weekend with Ice House. Starting Saturday during the game, a few lucky consumers will get a winning phone call, and one of those winners will get to see their favorite team play all season long. It could be you. See participating Ice House displays or visit icehouse.com to register your phone number. Ice House official beer of JP Sports Broadcast. Would like to congratulate George Culver from Phoenix, Arizona, last week's Get the Call grand prize winner. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents who are 21 and older. See displays for official rules. Sweepstakes ends November 20th of 2001. Now, are you thinking onside kick? No. We kick that thing deep. Try to hold it. There's still a lot of time left Absolutely. in this game. Three minutes in the third quarter. The ball is down as Lee Rogers hammers it deep into the end zone. Don't forget next week here on JP Sports, these Ole Miss Rebels against the Vanderbilt Commodores. That's from Johnny Vaught Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi. Should be a good one. Vanderbilt threw a scare into the Alabama Crimson Tide earlier today in the first half of our doubleheader. And the Ole Miss Rebels coming to life here in the third quarter. A nice drive by Eli Manning and the Rebels to get on the scoreboard. Well, you start talking about how can you get back in this football game. Really, Ole Miss needs a break. They need to get three and out. They need to have a break. They bring a long pass, something like that. Get a fumble, get a turnover. If you're Auburn, you're on the sideline. You're saying, hey, don't make any mistakes. Don't put the ball in trouble. If you're Jason Campbell, don't run it back. Protect the football. Bring it down. Just eat it up. Eat up the clock. Impressive drive engineered by the sophomore. And uh, Manning, a couple of excellent throws on that drive. Really the best by far that the yeah. Ole Miss offense has, uh, has looked today. 
really has. They, 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 that was a very impressive drive. You wonder why they couldn't have gotten that going earlier. Ronnie Brown came off the field uh, limping a little bit after that last play, and so Cassinius Moore is back. All he's done is run for three touchdowns. Yeah, this I afternoon. know. And where did we have Moore? We had him backing up with Ronnie Brown. And that one back offense, you don't think he's going to get many carries? He's gotten a lot of carries, and he's done well with the football. Yeah, today. they both have. Yeah. And they've got a third uh, tailback, a youngster by the name of Carnell Williams, who we have not seen oh, today. Yeah. He sprained his ankle in the game last week against Ball State. Here's Ronnie getting some attention from the Auburn training staff. Well, and you see he's drinking a lot of liquid. He's carrying a bottle with him. That means he's cramping up. That's... Ooh, wow. He had to make the 30-yard line. I don't know if he made it on no. third down. Wow, this is going to be close mark. I don't think he did. Give Jesse Mitchell, 95, credit for the tackle. So Ronnie Brown still getting attention from the trainers. What's happening down there, Warren Pepper? Well, it's kind of an interesting thing, Dave, because he was scheduled to be on the field in the last uh, drive, but he cramped up. So they had to hustle Cassinius Moore out there, and then you saw what happened. Brown's had over 80 yards running today, but he's really had problems in the early third quarter with cramping up in this heat. Well, you see they're taking, it looks like they may be taking his shoulder pads off, Warren. And if they take your shoulder pads off, you're done for the day. Duval punting it. Boy, a lot of room to return this one. And Armstead, who took a kick back 93 yards last week. There is a flag down as Armstead goes down at the 45-yard line. He is a brilliant return man. Boy, that could be all for naught. Those flags are thrown back at around the 25, 26-yard line. You always think block in the back. They're going to bring it back as the flag was thrown early on the return. And it comes back. A nice return by Armstead. But Ole Miss will have poor field position again. The Ole Miss Rebels backed up to the 15-yard line. Auburn's schedule. Take a look at this. Ooh, they got LSU next week easier. down in Baton Rouge. Oh, boy. Syracuse beat Central Florida earlier today. Then they're at Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, and Florida at home in Louisiana Tech. And they close out at Arkansas, at Georgia, and home against Alabama. Well, let's see what that... Uh, that little last drive, that 80-yard drive by Eli Manning. Let's see what it did for this Ole Miss offense. Can they continue to drive the football downfield? Manning getting more confident. Oh, what a... Oh. Threading the needle. Wow, you're exactly right. That's the way you talk about it. You talk about threading the needle. That's in the hands of all, both the receiver and the defender. That is a perfect pass, Dave. And Armstrong just took it away from the yeah. Walker defender. Watch this throw. Good look off right there. Now come back to your primary receiver and watch this. The hands are there, both. All, all four hands are right there when the ball is thrown. This is great coverage. Look, they both had a shot at it. Oh, and he just pulled it out of his hand. Roderick Hood tried to rip it away, but could not. Armstrong has been the go-to receiver for Manning today. Oh, tripped. Oh, looks oh. like he tripped on the 35-yard line. Robert Williams. Boy, and you wonder, you know, you, you, all the time you, you do something like that, when you trip up like that, you wonder, oh, boy, if he had broken out here, if he had done this. Just tripped up when he caught the football, when he got the football in the handoff. A lot of time left in this football game. We're going to go into the fourth quarter and see what uh, Ole Miss can do here in a moment. That's the last play of uh, the third quarter. Tommy Tuberville's Auburn Tigers uh, will take a 20-point lead into the final 15 minutes of football from Jordan-Hare Stadium. Tigers put a pair of touchdowns on the scoreboard in the third quarter. Ole Miss answering with a touchdown at their own late in the period. Cassinius Moore having a big day for the Tigers. We'll be back. This moment in Southeastern Conference football is presented by Sitco. We know you. I was raised in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. My first college choices were Maryland and Notre Dame, but I decided to play football for legendary coach Bear Bryant at the University of Alabama. I was the quarterback who led the tie to a 1964 national championship. Do you know me?
out the pickles. That was quarterback legend Joe Willie Namath. Joe went on to a 13-year NFL career. He earned all AFL honors twice and became the first NFL quarterback to pass for more than 4,000 yards in a single season. Broadway Joe led the New York Jets to a Super Bowl championship in 1968, but it all began in Tuscaloosa at the University of Alabama. This moment in Southeastern Conference football is presented by Sitco. We know you. So, you love to drive. You've just met your match. Chevy's moving the 2001 Malibu. 2,000 cash back or 0% financing on 2001 Chevy Malibu. Yeah, that's right. 2,000 cash back or 0% APR financing. Don't you just love when everything comes together? Make your money count now at your local Chevy dealer. Auburn did. We're back in Auburn, Alabama, Jordan Hare Stadium. The final 15 minutes of football, and we welcome you back to the jungle here at Jordan Hare. Tommy Tuberville said we got to come up with a, a clever, <laughs> catchy name for this place and uh, get some folks fired up. They're selling jungle T-shirts, and Shoot. it seems to be catching on a bit, Dave. We got Death Valley, we got the Swamp, and now it's the jungle. Armstrong at the 40-yard line, and Armstrong having a big day now for the Ole Miss Rebels. Manning is clearly looking for number seven. Chris Collins, we've not seen much of, if any, of today. What's going on with Chris Collins, uh, the Ole Miss receiver, Warren? Well, he re-aggravated an ankle injury earlier in the game. He heard it last week in their opener. They're not really sure if he's going to go back or not. He is on his feet, but he's about too, too deep on the sideline in terms of substitution. Well, he uh, was really good last week. He had three touchdown catches against Murray State. Manning finds Armstrong again at the 50-yard line. This Ole Miss yes. offense is beginning to find a rhythm, Dave Rowe. Boy, you know what? You wonder why uh, Auburn's dominated this game. As you look at the, the rushing yards, remember they had 91 yards at halftime? They got 102 yards in the second half, in the third quarter already. That's dominating. Well, last year, Auburn averaged just 163 yards a game rushing. And against a, a pretty good Ole Miss defense, they've already hit almost 200 today. And I want to tell you, when I look at Eli Manning, I think he's getting in the groove. And Rayford, a great spin move to the outside. Rayford down the right sideline. Oh! Rayford tackles, touchdown wow. Ole Miss. Boy, I, I'm glad I said Eli Manning was getting in the groove because that's, what, that's how you get in the groove. You throw a great pass, and then your receiver takes it 50 yards for a score. That's how you get back in a football game. This is a simple out, but he throws it with great velocity. Now he makes just a tremendous cut. And look at this. You think you got the angle on him? And he just runs away. He runs through a tackle there, through another one there. Touchdown, and Tommy Tuberville's going, oops, wait a minute. 14 minutes left. They're only down 13 points. A lot of time in this game. Absolutely. The extra point is good, and it is now a 13-point game. Less than a minute gone in the fourth quarter from uh, the jungle. And the Ole Miss Rebels, Eli Manning, bringing them back from a 27-point deficit. We'll be back. series test drive the ultimate driving machine at your local bmw center have you ever wondered what an sec football network tv broadcast would look like if there were no commercial sponsors watch closely and i'll show you this is southeastern conference football these are the people who will help us bring great sec football action to you every saturday support all tell and Ice House, official network sponsors of Jefferson Pilot Sports. Their commitment to college athletics puts you in the middle of the action. 
Pizza Hut has got a pizza custom made for everyone on the planet Earth. The Big New Yorker, 16 inches of foldable New York style pizza, stuffed crust pizza, a ring of cheese deliciously hidden in a tasty crust. Pan pizza, soft and chewy on the inside, crunchy golden brown on the outside. Exclusively only from the professional pizza on the brain, 24 7 obsessive. We care about pizza so much it's frightening. Pizza maniacs at Pizza Hut. A variety so vast it is irrefutable, mouth watering, delicious proof that together they are without the slightest doubt the best pizzas under one roof. Wow, I gotta go. I'm starving. You may not make it to the big time, but you can make it to the big game with Altel. Just enter for a chance to win Altel's ultimate football fantasy sweepstakes. You and three lucky friends could get VIP tickets and treatment at one of this season's biggest games. So make a play for the nearest Altel store today. We'll get you in on all the action. Well, a nice uh, little comeback here by the Ole Miss Rebels. They've scored two consecutive touchdowns on impressive drives. Yeah, quick touchdown. Quick touchdown. Tim Carter from a yard deep. Excellent coverage by the Ole Miss Rebels as uh, Carter has dropped it about the 17-yard line by Eric Oliver. Two great young quarterbacks here today, Dave. Rowe. No question about that. This Campbell kid is going to be a great one also. Oh, I like the way he reads. He's got great touch. Throws the rope when he needs it. Makes good decisions. Throws it out here. Picks up yardage. But then when he gets underneath problems and he's got trouble, can't find his wide out, he doesn't force the ball in. He scrambles with the ball and picks up that first down yardage. Tremendous advantage for a quarterback who can run like he does. And he keeps it on the bootleg. Great throw oh. to Carter at the 39-yard line. Beautifully done by the freshman quarterback out of Taylorsville, Mississippi. Well, that was nice. Thrown in between the coverage. They dropped to a zone deep, and they just threw it in underneath. We got somebody down. I wonder if that's Taylor, Seneca Taylor. Boy. Nope, it's not Taylor. I think that it's Marcus Woods yeah. at 29. Yeah. He's throwing safety. Got his first start uh, for the Ole Miss Rebels last week. The secondary challenged uh, today by the quarterback, Jason Campbell, and they've, uh, for the most part, played pretty well. Yes, I mean, they they, they've turned the ball over and given Auburn a number of scoring opportunities. Well, I think David Cutcliffe, in talking with uh, Warren Pepper at halftime, told him, said, hey, look, we made a lot of mistakes. Let's see if we can see the ankle right there. There he gets. Looks like he might have twisted his ankle. You know, he's kind of walking straight legs. Or did he grab his right hamstring as, uh, as he got up? There they are, right there. Let's see if we can perhaps see that play. He... Oh, there he is. I'm sorry. I, I circled the wrong guy. Hold on a second. 29 was down underneath. I thought he was involved in the play. He wasn't. He twisted his ankle when he turned around. So Woodson helped off the field. And the Auburn offense now setting up at its own 39-yard line. Oh, that'll smoke him. Whoa! Gophy missed him. And Moore uh, oh, able to fumbled. keep it. He fumbled. Now the ball's down. Yep. Wow, would that have been huge? Tommy Tuberville gets a big lump out of his throat. And that ball's out like that. I can tell you right now, the Auburn sideline are going, whoa! Just don't want to give this football up to a team that has right now has momentum. Big series uh, offensively for Auburn. So much time left. 13 minutes to go in the game. And uh, the momentum clearly has shifted toward the Ole Miss Rebel. Yeah, and he was clearly down in that picture. That's a good call. But big downs, you just see, you just get a feel that the momentum is starting to change. And things have got to start going right for Auburn. Because this game's got a lot of time left in it. Almost 13 minutes left. A lot of things can happen. Carter's got a lot of moves in him, but uh, Eric Oliver, that youngster from Jasper, Alabama, was there again. They've got a good-looking uh, young defensive player there. And Dave, you start thinking about what if, what if uh, that touchdown pass that Ole Miss had in the end zone when he came down with his toe, what if that had been called a score? What if Tommy Cumberville, when he wanted to go for two, and then they had to delay a game? So that one point, that extra point, really looms up here big. Well, that's stretching maybe a little bit, but uh, big down again. Campbell pressure. 
Oh, nice delivery. Oh, Green breaking away. Has the first down and a lot more to the 41 yard line as Charlie Anderson is finally able to make the tackle. But DeAndre Green, a big receiver at 6'1, 225, and a physical guy out there after he catches the football. Well, credit the quarterback. Watch him move strong side. He's got pressure, get out, throws across his body, and throws a strike. And then run through tackles, keep those legs. You talk about his size. Gothi's got to come down with that if he's going to, if they're going to stop him. They don't stop him. They give Auburn the ball. They move it on up, put a lot more pressure on this defense. It's an audible on the line. It's all movement by the defense. Brown, and he didn't fool anybody. Josh Cooper hit him three yards behind the line of oh, scrimmage. I thought Cooper was going to take the handoff. He came off the ball. He must not have been touched. I think that's that's maybe what you call a broken assignment. But a nice play by this Ole Miss Rebel defense. Let's check in with Warren Pepper. Nation, Dave, and I tell you, you know, yeah, they did get another touchdown and have 14 on the board. But I think the biggest thing that's happened now on Ole Miss's side, as I was just over there behind their bench, is that their defense got to rest for a little while. Well, that's a good point. Oh, absolutely. That's a big. There's point. a fumble. There's another fumble. He fell on it though. Brandon Johnson tried to receive the handoff from Campbell. They had some miscommunication there. And you know what this Auburn could be? You know what this could be a sign of? When your team starts to get tired, you do sloppy things. Not put the ball away, not protect it, not get the handoff. And you just start getting sloppy. Auburn, Auburn has had two of them. Now what happened on that play is I think Jason Campbell bobbled the ball, did not get the handle when he took it out of the center. They're really lucky that they were able to escape with that one. Big down here. Auburn does not want to give it back to this hot all-miss team. Campbell has receivers spread out. Last time he looked for DeAndre Green. Oh, he's got a lot of time. Oh, perfect pass. He found Green again, but short of the first down at the 35-yard line as Von Hutchins made a, a very nice tackle against that big guy. When it was fun yesterday, there's another cramp up you see right there. DeAndre Green wants to come out. But that was a nice pass. Crossing pattern hits right in stride. It wasn't Jason Campbell fun to talk with yesterday. Coming impressive. in Impressive. I know. Really, really impressive young guy. Very articulate, very poised. Talked about what he sees, what he likes out there. I couldn't trick him into saying anything. They bring Duke Hall on the field. I thought they might try a long field goal. This would be about a 52-yard field goal attempt. Well, the problem that you have is if it gets blocked. They've got a 13-point lead. What he wants to do is just pooch it inside the 10. Just pooch it in there. Oh, my goodness. You can't do it. Can That's you? not a pooch. That's into the stands. Oh. He just got too strong of a leg, Dave. <laughs> wow. Look at Tommy Tuberville. That's a pooch? Yeah, not real happy with that one, is it? Ole Miss gets the ball again. They're down by only 13. Comes in handy, huh? It's a lifesaver. We're looking for a new VP of our Northeast operations. Stop by my office later. Hey, Kevin, aren't you the VP of Northeast operations? Imagine what the journal could do for you. Get eight weeks of the journal for just 38 cents a day, a 50% savings. Call 800-474-8800. That's 800-474-8800. If you think all hot sauces are alike, think again. Some are just too darn hot. And others are too darn bland. Hey, could you pass the Texas Pete? Right here, partner. Hey, thanks. Texas Pete, the South's leading hot sauce, is perfect to lasso the flavor of all your favorite dishes. See you around. Texas Pete, it's the bottle with a cowboy. Nice seats, Axe Man. What is this? Like Group Double Z? At least a beer vendor comes up here, huh? Yeah. Have you got any oxygen? <laughs> yeah, what were they, uh, sold out of seats on the roof, genius? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. really did. This is really cool, though, guys. I've never seen a game from orbit before. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice pass. Nice pass. Hey, watch your heads, guys. Here comes a blimp. A <laughs> blimp. <laughs> How's the beer taste? Good. Good. Handling fee. Ice House style. We make the smooth, never-watered-down taste of Ice House for guys like you. There you go. Looking for a real power trip? Chevy's moving to 2001 metal. 1500 cash back or 2.9 APR on Chevy Suburban. 
1500 cash back or 29 APR on Tahoe. That's right, tough guy. Big cash back or low APR financing. We'll give you the power. The question is, are you going to use it? Make your money count now at your Chevy dealer. We're in the fourth quarter from the jungle. Jordan Hare Stadium, David Steele and Dave Rowe, along with Warren Tepper on the sideline. And the Ole Miss Rebels are threatening to make this thing very interesting here in the fourth quarter. Manning. That Harvard defense really sticking it to Joe Gunn all afternoon long. Yeah, they're not going to do it running the football. I don't see it done running. But I just thought in that last series, the last couple series, I just thought Eli in that, those last two series really started to come on. And look at the yards difference. 13 of 20, 186 yards in the score. DeAndre Green on the sideline. He rolled an ankle, apparently, on that last play, and they're looking him over. But doesn't Dave Ole Miss have to run a little bit just so the play yeah. action is, uh, is more effective? Well, I understand that, but uh, they're going to win. They're not going to fool anybody. He's got to throw the football. They set up the oh. screen to Sanford. Look at that quick pursuing oh. Auburn defense, though. Dontarius Thomas, DeMarco McNeil. So fast, and uh, you got guys that size that can run like that. You've really got something defensively. You're right. That's a great mark of a defense. Look at this. This is full out blitz. Everybody's coming after him, right? He dumps the football off. And if you don't have those linemen sprinting to the ball, if they don't come here and sprint to the football, you got problems. Look at them all getting out there. Turn it back in. You got Callier from the other side running down. Great speed on that. Auburn defense. Third down and three. Here comes a blitz. And the catch by Rayford, oh. a first down for the Rebels. And you don't see him throwing any better than that. I don't care if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. When you're under pressure in the SEC and you can throw a ball like this, you've got greatness. This is just a look inside pattern, and bang, he just throws it right to him. He's got a little bit of cushion, but that's just a strike. That's a great read. He loves to come off the football. He said he takes about two seconds from the time he takes the snap, looks back. And he had time because his yep. team picked up the blitz. Absolutely. They got a first down. There's a the play fake. Uh-oh. And he's got uh, Armstrong open again. That's catch number nine for Armstrong. Now, he is having a huge day. This guy is the leader of that receiving core, a national merit scholar in high school. Jamie Armstrong, a senior now out of Plantersville, Mississippi, and Clearly, Eli Manning feels real good about throwing the ball toward number seven right now. Absolutely, and you get the feeling that Eli Manning is getting in that little groove that quarterbacks get in when they start getting where they just think they can't miss. And right now, he's not missing. There's got to be some concern over on the Auburn side of the football because this young quarterback has awakened in the second half. Another blitz, Manning. He's got a man open. It's Armstead, but he is overthrown at the 10-yard line. Well, that's just man-on-man -man coverage, and you wonder if Manning had just a little bit more to turn around and look. He squared up nice, good fundamentals, and that's right off the fingertips. It's a well-thrown football. Not going to be intercepted because it's underthrown. Wow. This is a game of inches, isn't it? Certainly is. Manning would like to have that one back, though, and just uh, a yard shorter, and Ole Miss is on the scoreboard again. Yes, absolutely. See if he doesn't go right back to it. He had it last time. They caught him in a blitz. They put pressure on him. See if he can maybe do it again. A three-man rush this time, and the screen set up for Gunn. He got a yard to the 48-yard line. Great pursuit by Mark Brown. Not fooled by the screen. Well, most times the middle linebacker on a pass play, once he reads pass, he's got that fullback coming out of there, or that halfback, that knee back coming out of there. And that's what Mark Brown did that time. Number 52 said, I've got number 28 wherever he goes. So he just trailed him and tackled him. Big down here. If you're Ole Miss, you don't want to give the football up. You know what I do? I go back on that crossing pattern. I see if I can find maybe an Armstead. They've had a lot of success. If I'm Auburn, I think you come after them. They don't look like it, though. Look like they're going to drop back. Well, they only rush three. Now four. Oh, a lot of time. Manning. Still looking. Going to keep the football and knock down a bounce hard right in front of the Auburn bench at the 43. He needed the 40. He didn't get it. Roderick Hood 
was the first man there for that quick pursuing Auburn defense. Or he was going. He was going through his wideouts. He had a lot of time. His line gave him a lot of time. You can see his head looking down this side. He's looking for wideouts. They're not open. Good bail out of the pocket. Now, he tries to chase him downfield, get as much yardage as he can. Big decision. Do they go for it on fourth down? Seven and a half minutes left. And they're going to talk about it, taking their first time out of the second half to do so. Auburn 27, Ole Miss 14 in the fourth quarter from Auburn, Alabama. We'll be back in a moment. How Martian Zigbee Dorlu eats a Reese's. <laughs> There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. Touch up paint. Oops. Bendix brakes. TRW tie rods. Rabbit's foot. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. First driving lesson. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Of all the stories you've come to know, the most important by far is your own. With no other story, you care so much about how it turns out. Are you just waiting to see, or are you writing it the way you want it to go? At Jefferson Pilot Financial, we're doing more than providing financial services. We're helping you write the story of your life. I left the truck unlocked. No, his ears were a bit bigger and, and the nose was longer. Next thing I knew, the truck was gone. This him, sir? Yeah, that's him. That's the guy. Can't get enough peanuts? Get a payday. Sweet caramel and tons of salty peanuts. You may not make it to the big time, but you can make it to the big game with Altel. Just enter for a chance to win Altel's Ultimate Football Fantasy Sweepstakes. You and three lucky friends could get VIP tickets and treatment at one of this season's biggest games. So make a play for the nearest Altel store today. We'll get you in on all the action. The Ole Miss Rebels facing a fourth down and about four. And they're going to go for it here in the fourth quarter in Auburn, Alabama, trailing by 13 points. And interesting on that far side, Robinson is out of the game. He came to the sideline. See if Manning doesn't see that if the second team is in there, Willis. They come with a blitz. Manning, there's a flag down, and the pass is intercepted by Simmons. Oh, but there is a penalty flag oh, on the play oh, downfield. Wow. If that's a defensive penalty, if they're holding, that's an automatic first down. Oh, boy, this could be a huge play. This is how quiet this place got. Now Ford will tell us. If that's a defensive hold, ooh, boy, that's going to keep the drive alive. Yep, that's it. Good call, Dave. It's going to be an automatic first down for the Ole Miss Rebels. And look at him march this one off. Wow. All the way down to the 33 and a half yard line. A big, big play. Auburn had the interception. Simmons with the football and then the flag and the defensive holding. Well, this Ole Miss offense has just come to life. Oh, first yeah. 10 drives. They punted six times, fumbled three through an interception. And back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives now, and here they are on the 33-yard line of Auburn. Yeah, and they got Horace Willis in up the top of the screen. Trying to hit the fullback, Charles Stackhouse, well upfield. Carlos Rogers had him covered like a blanket. College football fans visit Huddle House and play our fantastic football game, where every scratch and match card has a winning combination. Thousands of prizes will be awarded, including a new Dodge Ram quad cab truck. Come on in and try your luck. Seven minutes, five seconds to play in the fourth quarter from Auburn, Alabama. Southeastern Conference opener for two Western Division teams, one of which is going to be very hopeful for their chances after today. Well, Manning's got Rayford at the top, one-on-one -on -one with Willis. Oh, he's going to run the ball. Oh, oh wow. Wow. 
A big, big hit by Ooh. Collier. And Collier's a defensive end. Now, he's not supposed to make that play. That's an underneath play, and what he does is he plays along the line of scrimmage, comes down, and I mean, when he hits you, he smacks you down. See, this play is, it's open right there. It's open, right? Watch this blur from the right, or from the left, I should say. That's what you call speed. That's right a deep, yeah, that's a deep leader. That is uh, some serious Southeastern Conference speed on defense. I hate to call plays, but I sure would go up top. Top of the, top of the picture, it's a good matchup. He gets time to throw it. Coming with a blitz. Pass caught by Armstead. It looks like it's good for an Ole Miss first down as Hood wrapped him up. The ball is inside the 25-yard line at about the 23. Oh, he takes the safe play on that one. He's got a good, he loves that out pattern where he's got that, that little drag to the outside. Armstead gets enough for that first down. And boy, hadn't Armstead, hadn't he had a day today? Armstead yeah. and Armstrong, yeah. both have uh, played very yeah. well. And, that's a long throw oh, by Manning. He, yeah. You know, that's a long way across that field. He well, threw it on a rope. Well, they talk about they talk about how he throws the ball to Arias. He threw it so that he couldn't, that so that it would not be intercepted. What is the big series here? If they score in here, they're gonna have four or five minutes left. 555 and counting. Auburn trying to get pressure, but can't do it. And this Bumble. pass is incomplete. Nope, he juggled it, yep. never had it. Right. Armstrong uh, never had control of it. Rogers was right there. This is a this Carlos Rogers is a freshman from Augusta, Georgia. Well, that's a big hit. He's got a good one there. Oh, they talk about closing speed. How quickly do you close? You know, as we look at the big guys up front, you see Buckles there, Claxton. Boy, those guys, they've given them some time. Johnson, two freshmen in there, number 76 and number 62, just freshmen. Dave, I think those two have grown up today. Oh, yes. Boy, you talk about experience. This is the 12th play of this drive. Manning, play action, rolling, looking, keeping it to the 20-yard line, a four-yard pickup for Eli Manning. Great coverage downfield, and then Carlos Rogers, a solid tackle. And you see Tommy Tuberville, he wants holding. That's the signal there. He said, wait a minute, he's holding. Look out there. That's the only thing the coach can't call, is those the referee plays. But he wanted a hold on the outside. None bigger than this play right here. You don't want to come up fourth down and have to make eight yards. And a field goal does Ole Miss no good. Yeah. No, oh, no. They're they're going for a touchdown. When they went for it on fourth down, there's no turning back now. See if Auburn doesn't come with some heat on them. Here's Manning. Here's the blitz. Here's Manning looking for Armstrong. Oh, he, oh, he had it. He dropped it. Oh, wow. Well, that uh, threw a scare into this uh, oh. huge crowd at Jordan-Hare Stadium. It looked like that was going for six. Armstrong could not quite pull it in. Well, it's a floater. Great touch. Watch this. Lay it up. And watch Armstrong. Watch him come over top of here. He's got it for a second right there. It just gets raked out at the tail end. Beautiful touch. Give Junior Rosegreen some credit. Number four for Auburn. Absolutely. His Look hand got in there. Oh, man, is that close. Oh, touchdown, I thought it. Oops. And now another fourth down situation for the Ole Miss Rebels. And David Cutcliffe will use uh, his second of three timeouts in the second half. Well, and you see over here on the defensive side of the ball, Auburn's got him over here, and they said, hey, don't hold him. That's an automatic first down. That's what kept this drive alive. Well, a, a great finish here this afternoon at Jordan-Hare. And two years ago, the Ole Miss Rebels came to Jordan-Hare Stadium, and that was a great one as well. The Tigers' Damon Duball had a chance to win it. A 36-yard field goal with 17 seconds left, just wide right. We go to overtime, and the Rebels took the lead on a Romaro Miller to Corey Peterson touchdown pass. The Ole Miss defense held tight and stuffed the Tigers on four straight plays inside the five-yard line. The Rebels holding on. 24 to 17, their first win ever here at Jordan Hare Stadium. A big win for Ole Miss two years ago, and for David Cutcliffe. And uh, we could have that kind of a finish here today, but uh, Archie's son Eli is going to have to pull a rabbit out of his hand yeah. here on this fourth down if that's going to happen. Well, I wondered if Eli would look up in the stand and say, "Hey, Dad, what do I need to do?" <laughs> Archie just enjoying the game. 
How about Manning the last two weeks? Pretty good, huh? Well, he's up to, what, 265, 265 yards today after throwing for 271 last week. Well, let's see what Auburn does. Are they going to come with pressure or drop back? I think you come with pressure. And they do. And there's a bump. Freifogel was oh, bumped boy. at the five-yard line by Rashad Walker, oh. and there is the flag. And what did I say they said in that huddle? Don't hold. Well, he didn't hold. He bumped. No. Well, that's as bad as the hold. It's an automatic first down if it's against the defense. And all the old Miss players are saying, yeah, it's going that way. Boy, and the fans don't like it. I mean, you stop and think. Two penalties have kept this drive alive, both of them on fourth down. Wow. Rashard Walker was out there on an island. This is just a crossing pattern over mid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's you can't put your hands on him like that. And he does look excellent picture. Golly, that's just a great shot by our cameraman. Boy, and you know what? Eli didn't see this. Watch Eli. Woo! <laughs> Hello. Ouch. The bobblehead snap. Golly. Back. Boy, he took a shot. But here are the Rebels near the five-yard line of Auburn. And a handoff to Stackhouse. He's Ooh. in for the touchdown. Oh, boy. You know what this game goes to right now? This extra point makes it 27-21. Oh, my goodness. And you remember back when that two-point play, when Tuberville wanted to go for the two-point play? This is just a roar up the middle. You catch him, good. Put your head down and just go in. But, boy, has this game turned around in the second half. I mean, this is not the same quarterback. What do you have, 39 yards in the first half? And, I mean, he's lighting it up in the second half. They're down six points with 440 left. Ooh, this could be really interesting if they get the ball. And you know this crowd is nervous. Well, you could uh, almost hear a pin drop here at Jordan Hare Stadium right now if it weren't for the Ole Miss fans down in the north end zone making a lot of racket. But uh, what a comeback by the Ole Miss Rebels. They have now made it a 27-21 ball game. Well, we talked about the history of the past. Boy, this could be one that makes the history for years. Well, don't forget, coming up next Saturday at 12.30 Eastern and 11.30 Central Time, Vanderbilt travels to Ole Miss. The defenses will be in high gear in pursuit of two outstanding quarterbacks, the Rebels' Eli Manning. He threw for five touchdowns in his debut last week, coming on strong again here today against Auburn. Commodore's Greg Zolman, he remembers what he did the last time against Ole Miss at Oxford. And he shocked the Rebels in overtime then. So join us next Saturday at 12.30, 11.30 Central. Check local listing for the Jefferson Pilot Sports Station in your area. <laughs> Eli, who? Yeah. Eli Manning. That's who says that Rebel who. fan. Golly, you know, this is the stuff that legends are written about. I mean, you make a comeback. You realize they were down 27 to zip? I, I mean, do. man, I mean, we're talking about a touchdown, and they win this game. After Auburn, you got to you got to take control of that offensive line. Roderick Hood down the seam and down he goes at the 30-yard line. Now it's uh, very important for the Auburn Tigers to get their offense back in gear because they have gotten very conservative here after building that 27 to nothing lead and they can't afford to do that any longer. Dave, Boy, look at those yards. We're talking about he had 39 yards at half. That is absolutely incredible. One thing that may really work into the favor of Auburn is that Ole Miss has one timeout. Jason Campbell, a good day. Good day. There's Ronnie Brown back in the game, running behind the right side of his offensive line, picking up about four yards to the 33-yard line. And you remember those two timeouts that uh, Ole Miss called on those fourth downs to talk about it? Those two timeouts, they stop the clock. You see the way the clock just keeps on ticking off now? You take a lot of time. Quarterback's supposed to walk up there, look around, and just take some time. Let that clock go down. Ronnie Brown, good numbers, and uh, Cassinius yeah. Moore, his backup, has three touchdown runs. But the Tigers are fighting for their lives right now in the jungle in the fourth quarter. Uh oh here comes some pressure. Long count. Long count. And the toss comes to Brown. Look at that Ole Miss defense pursuing out there on the corner. Eddie Strong, very quick for that linebacker, and he comes over and makes the tackle for the Rebels. And interesting, he got down before he went out of bounds. 
That allows the clock to run down. He came down about an inch from stopping that clock. It's going to be a huge third down. Earlier today, college football scoreboard brought to you by Pizza Hut, Alabama. Victorious over Vandy. Kentucky a winner. Miami's shutting out Rutgers at the half. Michigan leading Washington in the fourth. And Oregon on top of Utah in the fourth. Boy, heads up play by Jason Campbell. Let that clock run all the way down. Just take your time. He's going to throw it up. He's got Carter. And Carter didn't close to a first down. He was hit by Seneker Taylor. And let's see where they spot it. No, he didn't get it. He had to make the 40-yard line. Big tackle oh. by Taylor. Now, if you're Tommy Tuberville, do you want to give it up? Mm. I don't know if you want to give it up. They're thinking about it. Oh, they They're are. Measure. Well, that's what you... And you know, I, I thought I saw in the stands Jason Campbell's father. A little bit of concern on his face. First and ten for the Auburn Tigers. Oh, wow. I thought he had to make the 40-yard line. There he is. That's... Uh, Larry Campbell, Jason Campbell's father. Now, he'll take a deep breath. He's not worried. No. But how about Campbell this half? 7 of 7, 85 yards. He's had a good half of football. Well, again, Auburn with that 27 to nothing lead got rather yeah. conservative in uh, trying to chew up the clock and have they've not been able to make first downs, uh, giving Ole Miss opportunities to, uh, to score, which they've done. Now, you tell your quarterback, look at the clock in the end zone. It's down to 5. Four, three, two. You snap it on one. Perfect. Use as much clock as you can. And Moore rattles off another five or six yards on first and ten. That was a very important first down for Auburn. Oh. And now Moore picks up good yardage on first down. I thought he had to make the 40-yard line. I must have looked at the wrong flag. But again, one timeout for Ole Miss. When do they use it? They're going to be down under two minutes here. I think he used it after this down, but he just made almost six yards on that carry. But heads up play. How about Jason Campbell looking at that clock in the end zone, letting it tick down. He's got his eyes on it, just watching it, just taking his time. Look how cool he is in there. Doesn't he realize there's 90,000 people looking at this? Two, one, snap. Perfect. And now. it's Moore again. Yeah, now call your timeout right now. The, uh, Moore is about two yards short of a first down. It'll be a third down play coming up for Auburn. They're not calling their timeout. Wow. And the clock continues to tick, 125, 124 in the fourth quarter. Tommy Tuberville's team trying to hang on for a precious early season Western Division victory. Well, look how calm he is back there. Coach has told him he's, he's played that play clock just fantastic. I mean, he's just walking up there casually like it's a stroll in the park. It's at 7, 6, 5, 4. He's just playing it perfect. Snaps it on one. And if uh, the Rebels don't hold here, their chances are extremely slim, and they do, apparently. Now use your timeout. Now they're going to burn it. With 51 seconds left, Eddie Strong makes the big stop for the Ole Miss Rebels to give perhaps Eli Manning a chance to pull this out. There's uh, the timeouts now as Ole Miss has just burned its final one, and the Tigers still have all three of theirs. Auburn jumped out to a 27 to nothing lead. But Eli Manning has led the Ole Miss Rebels back into contention here today with three second-half touchdowns. And, Dave, think about this. This drive started with over three minutes and 50 seconds. So Auburn did what they had to do. They, they ate up that clock. They're down under, well, they're at 51 seconds. They're going to have to give up the football unless you come up with a Tommy Tuberville trick. But I think in this situation, no tricks. Drive them deep. Give Eli Manning 50 seconds with, what, uh, no timeouts left? That's a tough chore. And you've got a uh, defense that you're going to be counting yeah. on all year long. You have a lot of confidence in your Auburn defense. So uh, back them up and let that defense sure. do its job. Exactly right. That's exactly that's smart football. I just don't think you go for it in a situation like that. Because if you don't make it or you have a penalty, you give them the ball at midfield. No timeouts, 50 seconds left. That's a that's a hard chore. But oh boy, you remember, you know what I keep on thinking about? You remember that touchdown in the yeah, end zone? I know. Old Miss fans are gonna be talking about that for a long time. No question about it. But uh, the only important thing right now is uh, that the Rebels are gonna get the ball back and uh, they're gonna rush the 11 they, here. Yeah, they have they, nobody back. Think they can block it? Here they come. 
Almost got it. Duvall got oh, run into. And a penalty it. flag is going to end this ball game pretty much unless some bizarre circumstance occurs. A flag thrown and Duvall was hit by the onrushing attack of the Ole Miss Rebels. Stackhouse tried to block it, but he got a little bit of leg. Absolutely. First down and listen to the crowd. All you got to do is fall on it now yeah. for the Auburn Tigers and oh, get yeah. out of here with a victory. There it is. Boy. A big yeah. rush. See Stackhouse number 45. Is he the one who gets him? No. Well, maybe, yeah. Oh, yeah, Stackhouse. There's a bunch of guys in there. It looked like... Uh, the Auburn player might have been blocked into him. Number 83, Jay Ratliff. Got to avoid him. Boy, and you wonder what it would have been like if all Ole Miss had gotten any kind of an offense in the first half. They came alive in the second half, though. Auburn just uh, running out the clock now. The Rebels cannot stop it. And what a football game today in the Southeastern Conference. The defending Western Division champion, Auburn Tigers. Jumping out to an early lead at 27 to nothing at one time in the third quarter. But Ole Miss will not feel too badly about no. this one because of, of this young man right here and what he did in one and a half quarters. Well, Archie's happy up in the stands. His son played well in the second half, and you start thinking it was a great effort by Ole Miss. I mean, to be down 27 to zip, and you come back, score 21 points, and you had them worried. On the road. Absolutely. In the jungle. Absolutely. And great effort. Hair. But Auburn holds on. And the Tigers now have won nine in a row here at home. Auburn wins it by six over the Ole Miss Rebels. Back in a moment here on J.P.